Welcome back. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast where we think we know everything, but we really don't know shit. But I tell you what we do know. We got that number one pick, baby. Number one. What we going to do with it? Ryan is going to do the right thing with it. He's going to trade that bad boy. He's got to trade that motherfucker. And we got to get some more picks. We going to the Super Bowl in the next few years. Guarantee that. But, man, we have a great show tonight because we're going to talk some more about that number one pick. And we're going to talk about some of the possibilities. Um, Some of the possibilities with that pick, man. There's so many different things we can do. Devontae Adams, no. No. If y'all talking about Devontae Adams, stop it. Stop it. Unless that deal is really, really sweet. Otherwise, stop it, man. He's a 30-year-old wide receiver. He might have three, four good years left. That's it. So, I mean, other people, they might disagree with me, but so what? So anyway, aside from that, we also have a great guest tonight. I'm not going to say anything yet um, because he's having some technical difficulties. But, oh, here he is. He's popping up right now. So I will say Mayor Casey Erlach is going to join us on the podcast. And, yep, we got a post-it note coming up the return of the post-it note, and we're going to do a little bit of Hawk Talk, too. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. So let's go. You are now rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast, where they think they know everything, but honestly, they don't know shit. Summer league games, and they tell you about these new up and coming coaches. I think we should get rid of every motherfucking owner in Chicago. Enzo and Crusoe both in there on the corner like your defensive generals. But they need to get that strong safety who's not scared to hit somebody. They really don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Nah, we don't know shit, man. But tonight we are going to talk to somebody who does know shit. So we are in good company. Um, But first... Let me bring in my guys, the All-Star team. First up, my man, the stat man who knows every single stat from every single team since the 80s and 90s, basketball and football, my man, JB. What up, T? What up, JB? Man. uh, (laughs) A lot, huh? A lot. Um, How you feel about that number one pick? I mean, um, it is what it is. I I, I hope again, you cautiously, gotta, cautiously you optimistic. Gotta, I just hope Pose does the right thing. Cautiously not, optimistic. You love that phrase. I hope he does the right thing and not the Chicago Bear thing. If well, you get what I mean, I'm saying. He and came I, in and he has not done Chicago Bear things yet. So he ain't had well, no let, number let, one pick let's, either. So let's hope for the best. You yep. know, getting rid of getting rid of Roquan was not the Chicago Bear thing. They would have kept because they don't they didn't know any better. But he had a he had a plan in mind. So 
Well, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna say that was the best plan either. Man, trust the process. We ain't gonna say that's the best plan. I'm not letting him off the hook for that. Rokon uh, still got his 20 mil. I know, so know you not. I know you not. But yeah. before we segue to the next stop, I gotta say these names in remembrance for everybody. Romeo Cornell, David Cully, Lovey Smith. That's all I got. Okay. All right. All right. Shout out to Moore's Beer. Okay. So with that being said, let's move on to the next all-star who probably has the foulest mouth in the city. Yeah, this dude can't stop cursing. I know he's going to curse it up tonight, too. My man, foul mouth, C. Fucking right, I'm gonna cuss it up tonight. Hey, just, man, just, 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 just not again. doing that right now. Frank can't watch this shit at work. Neither can I. That is that is my goal every fucking week. Make sure Frank and now JD cannot watch this show at work. Cause your mouth is so goddamn yeah, fat. So you never gonna foul. get on network television. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? <laughs> so foul mouth, what do you think about that first round pick? I actually like it. I actually like the fact that we got the first round pick because I'll be a, a little down, dejected if, if you know, the Bears showed this year that they wasn't capable of winning any games. Like, they were really truly as bad as their record was. And they may have went, what was it, three and what, fucking 14, whatever the fuck it is. But they're not as bad as that record says. And we've seen that. We know that the tank was fully in. Excuse me. And that's why I'm happy about having it because I see there's hope. You got over 100 million in cap space. First round pick, trade down, get some more picks. I'm all down for that. Also, I want to send a very special shout out to my beautiful daughter, Taylor, who just turned 17 today. Oh, hey, happy birthday. Shout out to you, baby. Daddy loves you. Enjoy your day. Get that, get, gun this car motherfucker ready, rolling. get that gun car ready, boy. I mean, I already got that. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I should have known. I should have known. I had I, that the first day she was born. So let's um uh, let's continue with the all-star train and bring in our guy who has that hawk talk. And we actually will talk about the black hawks tonight. Well, Frank will do most of the talking. We're going to do a lot of learning because we don't know shit about hockey. I know I don't. I don't know shit. What the fuck is a power play? Yeah, right. <laughs> Bring in Frank the Tank. I'll teach you about a power play. It's simple. What up, man? You're going to be at the game with me. <laughs> Here we go. Ah, what's up, guys? That what's going on, man? I, I really wish that I had a bottle of champagne right now so I could toast that son of a bitch to the number one pick in Lovey Smith right now. Have so in that case, have. I will do a shot. And my boy JB going to hit me up with that shot too. Oh, what I do with it? Lost nope. that shot already? Nope. Hold on. Holding it on. <laughs> oh, shit. That's chair. We love looking. You get the plenty two of <laughs> the two who drink on the podcast. You get, you get plenty of drinking and cussing on this podcast. We very family oriented here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Will we get docked by an alcohol company because we drink a shot? Hope not. Wait a minute. Did you just say we family oriented and six minutes and fifty eight seconds into the show? We <laughs> can't watch work. He was bullshitting. He was bullshitting. He was. Bullshitting. I know he was. <laughs> Yo, our our guest tonight, man. I can't wait to talk to this guy. And, and um, he, like I said, he knows a lot of shit. A lot more shit. Probably than we do, I'm sure. He probably knows more about hockey than you guys. I bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask him that one. He knows a lot. He knows a lot about the ins and outs of the NFL. <laughs> he also knows about other shit too. Uh, he knows about arena football. He knows about mm -hmm. all that shit. So uh, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm just gonna bring him in. I was gonna Mr. play the violin for you, Mr. Mayor. Casey Erlach. Thanks. Thanks, fellas. Thank oh, you. Casey's looking a lot better, baby. Yeah, What's happening, so man? I might just I be the computer. 
<laughs> I apologize for the inconvenience oh, earlier, man. fellas. I I, I lost oh, Wi-Fi on good. my brand new computer, so I must not have updated something right, right? That dial up that dial up AOL internet. <laughs> you still got AOL account, Frank, so don't make fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to email me later on my AOL, let me know. You know what? I think I probably still do have an AOL account as well. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sure I do. So, so what's going on, Mr. Mayor? Nothing, man. I'm good. I don't have the nice background setting like the four of you guys do, but you know, I'm, <laughs> I had to readjust everything from out of my office for some strange reason. So here I am sitting here relaxing. Looks like good, relaxing, man. Yeah. Looks real good. I got I the kids got in the, the other room. Behind me. So no, uh, y'all's backgrounds are good. Mine, I got nothing, man. Jeez, I feel bad I now. See, I see some nice blinds. Yeah, some nice blinds. <laughs> man, yeah, that looks like something out of a magazine back there, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, nah, hey, I appreciate you guys having me on. I really do. I mean that. I know, Terrence, we've talked for the last couple months, but I appreciate you having me on. I'm looking Happy forward to hanging out with you guys tonight, man. Yeah, we definitely. appreciate you taking the time, man. No, nope, so I appreciate it. About, let's talk about you a little bit, man. What What are you doing lately, aside from marrying? Mary. Mary. Yeah. From, Mary. Well, I'm still in office. I have so I have two more years left. Uh my term ends in twenty twenty five. So that'll give me twelve years in political office. Um so still currently there. I, I work for my father in law for a construction company in Lamont, Illinois. I've been there. This is four years in January. We we do all commercial restaurants, retail and stuff like that. And then just raising two little kids, man. That's it, brother. Yeah, yeah. Life, now, what's, the, what's the name Good of the uh, the the city that you're marrying? Yeah, so the city is called the Village of Matawa. It's M E T T A W A, and you guys, if you've been on the north side or up to Hallis Hall, you've probably driven driven through it a million times. You, it's on if you get off on Route 60, which is where you go to Hallis Hall at. On uh, instead of going east, you would go west, and we got a Costco and Granger and and the hotels right there. And that's where my village starts. And then on the, the east side of 294, 9094 is uh, Lake Forest. So that's where we start. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Is that like past Bannockburn off the e -way? Like Yep. That so so Bannockburn, JB, Burn. is like right at uh, like Route 22, <clears throat> which is Half Day Road. Half Day Road, east. okay. So that goes to like Waukegan Road right there. That's all Bannockburn. Gotcha. So you're not too so, far. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, so I'm not far. I'm just, I'm right here. It, it was nice because for 12 years brian lived behind me and it was five minutes for him to go to house hall you know so it worked out yeah, nice yeah it's nice i mean i yeah. got three acres and he has 10 he had 10 right behind me until last year so we literally well, i'd walk out my back door to his house and it, it was great you know that's, that's awesome. awesome that's what's up yeah so it was JB, cool you sound like you frequent Bannockburn? Yeah, I'm about to say, what the fuck? How the fuck did you know what the fuck that was at? I worked in Bannockburn. I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. Bradenburg. There was a basketball camp there one year, and I yeah. was there. And it's, you know the facility I'm talking about. It's like top-notch crazy. And, you know, be out there. We did the little thing at Hallis Hall for the kids a few years back. Like, you know, it's, it's nice up there. It's peaceful. Yeah. Easy to yeah. get to. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know, gotta JB. get on the north side. Open up the Marianos up in Bay. I don't know, JB. That shit sounds suspect as hell. What you been doing out there? <laughs> I just told hey, you. I think Terrence, Walgreens the is, is, headquarters. JB's is right. You guys think that the north side of Chicago is like Irving Park and diversity and stuff like that. That's not the north side of Chicago. The north side of Chicago is Highland Park, Highwood, North Chicago, Waukegan, Lake Forest. Matawa, that's the north side of Chicago, man. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Sound I like Frank's it. type of Frank's north area. Of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> this north of Chicago. Uh, but so aside from marrying, what what else in and taking taking care of two kids? What else you got going on? Construction. You said. Yeah, so I still I, I still do construction. I've been doing that for four years. We do, like I said, retail restaurants, assisted living, mm -hmm. uh, small industrial stuff like that. I've been doing that for four years. It's been four years this month, so that keeps me busy. I don't know. I I listen. Two kids. I got uh, a three year old and a five month old. So that <laughs> that keeps me quite quite busy, as wow. you guys know. I'm sure. 
Uh, who Haley. most of us on this call got kids and everybody's shaking yeah, their heads. Yes, year so, old. I know exactly. You know, you between get. that and work and being mayor, that keeps you busy. And then, I, you know, I went to Arizona. I think I'm going to go out there for the Super Bowl and spend a couple of days with Brian because it's in Arizona and he's in mm-hmm. Arizona. So I'm thinking about going out there probably Thursday to Sunday <laughs> and, and uh, hanging out. But, you know, uh, I, I got free time for the most part. I, I, I try to, but I like my weekends at home chilling and – and just doing nothing, man. Honestly. Doing nothing is the best, ain't it? <laughs> Absolutely. We love doing nothing. We <laughs> love <laughs> that. So uh, you hey, did you race again, did you? Yeah, I think you froze. Oh shit, uh, you froze. He froze again. Oh, I see well, your cheeks okay. moving a little bit. You got a little, uh, little movement. This shit happens to us all the time, people. You know, we're kind of experts it's, at this It's foul mouth's so. mouth, man. It exactly. just freaking freezes. So this is what we're going to do. There he is. Oh, there, there he goes. He's there. back. He's on froze now. Oh. He's on froze. Uh-oh, oh, you jinxed froze it. again. Oh, Damn, Wi-Fi. Terrence. The suburban Wi-Fi. I, I said, what a game last night. Georgia, Georgia oh, put it on. Oh, shit. You call that a game? You guys got me? Yeah, I don't know if that was a game. <laughs> Rocky <laughs> Four, throw the damn town. Right, that, that was wasn't okay. That was bad. I feel bad yeah. for TCU. Yeah, if they die, they die. They, <laughs> they die. Hey, so a little, little history. So I know foul mouth. Oh, JB, shit. you're a stats guy, you right? From what I hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're you're freezing up, Casey. JB. Connect. Uh oh. What? Uh oh. How's that? Uh, still frozen. Oh. Dang, man. Maybe. maybe you, are you close to your router? No, I'm not. I don't. I'm not even. Why? I'm on. I took oh, really? Yeah, oh, there we oh. go. That's better. Yeah, I now took off everything. It. Yeah, that's better right there. Okay, you said you have a little stat for us. Well, not a stat. I guess it's a uh, a trivia question. So for for TCU, there was a coach named Gary Patterson who was there for a long time. Remember? Yeah, mm-hmm. no question. Mm-hmm. So where did where did where did Gary Patterson come from? Northwestern. Northwestern. No. We ain't going to Northwestern. No. Nope. <laughs> Gary Patterson. I'm he was at right, New no, Mexico. Wasn't he Kansas State, right? Kansas he was the State? University of New Mexico's defensive coordinator in 2000, in 1997 and 98 under Dennis Franchoni. Oh, wow. so Dennis Franchoni took the Alabama job. Oh, shit. Wow. You guys remember I, that? I should have known it was going to be. I should have said New Mexico. Some told me it was going <laughs> yeah. to be a New Mexico in there. Some goddamn way. I knew it was it's coming. It's true. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Aaron Patterson was Brian's defensive coordinator in college, and then Rocky Long, who took over the head coach, went to San Diego State, and Rocky oh, Long God. was there for like six or seven years, if you guys remember right. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's damn. damn. That's a, I mean, that's, that's yeah. right there. Damn, you got JB on that man. man. Yeah, JB. Well, maybe I didn't. He's probably looking it up right now. That's why I look at him. I know. He, he do got that look like he um over there Googling some shit, don't he? I'm scared to move my computer because I might lose everybody, so I can't look up nothing. I ain't looking up shit. You can have Google speak. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I got a question because as a sports guy, what made you want to get into politics after your football career? Yeah, good question, JB. Um, so I think it was Brian's um, – Last year in 2012 or something, I was approached by some people in the village to the outgoing mayor wasn't going to run again. So he he approached me to say, hey, would you be interested in running for a trustee or mayor? And I was like, it was Brian and I that attended the meeting and we get in the car. And I was like, dude, I ain't I ain't doing that. I'm I'm retired. You know that. And I'm done and blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, I thought about it for a couple of weeks and I said, what the heck? What do I got to lose? So. I had some friends. I've always had a few people in, in politics that I've, I've felt comfortable with and, and still very close with to this day. So I asked them, and you know, one thing that they said to me, when you run a campaign, whether you win or lose, it's one of the best experiences that you'll get in life, you know, yeah. between running a campaign and meeting people and raising money and fundraising and, and going out and doing all these different events, you know, you're running nonstop. So I've been in four four elections in eight years which is crazy to think yeah. um 
you know, but I said, you know, in 2013, I ran for mayor 2015, I ran for Senate 2017. I run for mayor again. And then 20, 2021, I run again as a write-in because I had all the other stuff going on in my life. So, um, I won as a write-in, but yeah, I don't know. It's just people that were surrounded by me saying, Hey, you should do it. It's good to do public service. And, uh, one guy that was on my board at the time, Roger Lane, he said, uh, uh, your mom will thank you when you get to heaven one day for doing all this public service. So I said, all right, man. That's what's up. So it's been good. Listen, I met a lot of uh, great people. I'm very, very blessed and fortunate to be elected mayor and serve this good little village that we have. It's awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. Cool. cool. And so, you didn't even think you were going to do it at first. That's crazy. <laughs> no, I didn't. I hadn't. If you would have asked me in 2000, 2001, what, if I would have thought about politics, I would have laughed at you, JB. <laughs> I really would have, man. So, but it's good. No, it's been it's been good. It's been good to my family. It's been it's been good for us. So, um, is there a team that you uh, do you currently watch football now? So, foul mouth. Uh, honestly, you know, I took a break when Brian retired. Uh, I followed it for about three years because there were still a bunch of the guys playing, right? So I knew, I knew Charles still, I knew Julius, I knew, I obviously knew Lance very well, and, and there was a bunch of guys still playing that I felt like uh, I had, well, I had hung out with or known for a long time, and then you know probably I don't know we get to 2016, 2017, uh, and I hadn't been, I didn't go back to a game until 2018 when they honored Brian at the Monday night halftime game of Seattle if you guys remember. So that was the first game that him and I had ever been back to since he had retired. Um, so, you know, I, I follow it. Yeah. I still watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm in tune. If you guys are going to ask me bears questions, I'm ready for sure. So I got, I, I, read, I got one too. That, I got you one know, too. It's not really a, oh, go ahead. Finish. I didn't know. No, no, go ahead. Frank. Trust oh. me. Um, so I remember hearing this from your brother Brian a while back, how he was not for them moving to Arlington and possibly putting the stadium in a dome. How do you feel about that? Yeah, good. Uh, it's funny because you think about Chicago and, and uh, uh, many people on this phone call live in Chicago and, and know what they, you know, they pay a million dollars a game to play at that, at the, right? So they put, you think about all this stuff about why Jerry Jones did what he did and why Stan Kroll did what yeah. he did when in Inglewood, in Inglewood, California, say, well, it's it's not that. It said you own the piece of property, you own the stadium, you own the parking, you own the retail, you own the concession. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you unfortunately in Chicago, you're paying the million dollars, you're not getting much off of ticket sales, you're not getting anything off of concessions, off of beer sales, rarely. So it's very very minimal the the ROI on it. So. You're saying if I could buy a piece of property and and create my own somewhat city, or is what you want to call it? it am, I for, <laughs> am I all for the, the the Soldier Field? It's one of the best stadiums. You know, it's the smallest stadium in in all of in all of football, but it's it's still one of the best places to ever run out of the tunnel there, to ever walk down and stand on that field. It's a phenomenal feeling. It really is. So I don't I don't know how you replicate that in Arlington Heights. Um, you never will. You're not going to replicate no, it. It's anywhere. not going to happen. Yeah. So, but for especially business, since it's a founding franchise too, who doesn't even have their own yeah. stadium. Like it, it's it's sad. So I think for uh, in my mind for you know if you're just doing it for a business, which it is a business for the McCaskies, then uh, it's it's a good it's a smart move. Do am yeah. I for it? I don't. I've never been before. I'm leaving Chicago. I think it's great, but you know, there's no parking down there. You, you, everybody dreads going and parking and walking to the stadium and doing this. Can't even tailgate anymore. It's sad. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> How I you going to even you know, get just, there? It's like with anything. It has the pros and cons, right? But I think the pros on this one, if you're doing it as a business decision, yeah. outweigh the cons. Definitely. Yeah, and they're also doing it to get a Super Bowl here in Chicago. Yeah. But unless you could football. pick up the Big Ten championship on any, and yeah. if it's you know for football, you could you you know if you're going to do an indoor one, look at Indianapolis. They pick up everything. Look at yeah. look yeah. at the Dallas Cowboys. They do the Cotton Bowl. They do this bowl. They do that bowl. They do this UFC fight. They do they do that fight. They do this boxing match. I mean, they do everything. So let me ask you this: with the new six minute video that's out about the new Bears Stadium, what it would look like if they re renovated Soldier Field. 
Do you think another team might be enticed to come here? No. You only got one team. You we we can't do like um, Thank you. like in LA or something like that, JB. I mean, I can understand it with baseball because the White Sox have been here. Obviously the Cubs have been here a hundred something years, mm-hmm. as we all know about and, and can talk about until we're blue in the face. But how are you gonna support two football teams? Especially one of them being a founding franchise type yeah. team. Like I it it would make no sense to me. That's that's just me being a biased and obviously you, the Bears have been very good to myself and the Bear and, and, and my family. But how, how do you support two NFL teams? You don't. Not only that, it, you look at if another franchise came here into Chicago, they would have to play at Soldier Field, right? Yeah. So guess what? They're going to be doing the same thing that the McCaskies doing. Yeah. And I doubt any franchise well, wants to come in yeah. and be written Soldier Field. But remember, there's that piece about – um, I believe it was Shad Khan who has tied business ties in Chicago. It was like, what if they just bought that old McCormick place space and turned that into a stadium? But then you're still stuck with Soldier Field. What are you going to do with Soldier Field? Soldier That's Field fun. is owned by the city of Chicago. Yeah. It's That's owned by the park. It's, it's going to be a museum. Oh, you're just going to flip yeah. it to a museum then because Chicago is not going to give that up. Yeah, you'll be owned by the park museum, which is fine. I just said, you know, either way. What are you going to do with an empty stadium that holds 62,000 people, right? Yeah, oh, that's about the only thing I can think of. Chicago Fire. The Chicago <laughs> Fire, yeah. They'll, fit, they'll probably they'll fill, fill it up. They'll place. fill it up. Yeah, yeah but probably about 4,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fama, I got to tell you, I went to the – I went to the Chivas Barcelona game about 15 years ago. I don't know. You can look it up whenever they played there. And it, there was 50-something thousand people there, and they didn't sit down one minute. Yeah, they man. cheered for, you know, 90 minutes of that game or, you know, that soccer. I don't I don't really understand soccer man, that much. That but, soccer like, shit is that. ridiculous. They I said they had the airlift. Um, what was his name? Uh, Messi or somebody? Because I guess whoever it was that won. The, the go to soccer. Up. Yes, they had that. They had that. Airlift that some bitch up out of there because it was so many damn fans. That shit ridiculous. Yeah. I that believe it, ridiculous. Man. That was a great World Cup game, though. I'll give soccer that, man. Shit, I played that shit one time. That shit too tired for me. My ass too lazy. Yeah. I was I was fucking the, much. I wanted <laughs> trophies. Two soccer trophies was. for soccer, actually. I was pretty. I was pretty good when I was a That's teenager. Damn, it got, quiet. it got quiet as hell. Like, y'all don't believe me. Get the fuck I, out. No, I'm just going to say, I, I mean, tried my shoes once. It was an overrated experience. Yeah. <laughs> I I have nothing against soccer, nothing at all, but I just I like contact sports. I played center, and I was able to go back and forth. I told them motherfuckers, nah, y'all switch me. I'll be the goalie. <laughs> Too much fucking running, man. Sliding you and shit. You ever get hit by that ball. soccer ball, dude? That ball hurts. Yeah, that shit hurts. And then you got to kick it a certain way. You can't kick that shit with your big toe. You got to kick it to the side and shit. <laughs> you break it. <laughs> yeah, you break it down. So, yeah, I'm good. Mm-mm. So, uh, did, you, did you see that? Did you see the Bears game on Sunday? I did. I watched you a little did? bit of it. Did, yeah, you, did, you you that, did you see that Texans game? Because that's what oh, we should be talking about. Yes, that that's more of a <laughs> highlight. <laughs> Shout out. I don't want to talk about that. I'm, I'm still upset. Just when, we, just when we thought that Chicago could not love Lovey Smith anymore, he goes and does something <laughs> like that. Like Listen, that, was, I like- that was a big F you to Houston because he knew he was getting fired. It was like, I am going to cost you your number one pick right now and go for that two point conversion. Well, I, I, if if I'm the Houston Texans right now, or or if I'm any coach looking for a job for the Houston Texans, I'm saying, why would I go to the Houston Texans? They fired two back to back coaches <laughs> within less than two years. Three straight years. It's, it's, it's three actually straight years. three straight years. Oh, yeah, three, right, four right, coaches. Right, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. Well, You're right, three Jimmy. straight years of one year coaches, and I think it's four out of five years yeah. of coaches in Houston. Yeah. It's a, I it's just a think it's right wrong now. all around. You know, you, you can't expect any coach. I mean, okay, you know what? You guys want to change gears. Talk about who's the guy, who's the head coach, Matt Everless. How do you say his last name? I like the Everless. How do, you, how do you lose nine straight games and keep your job? Because they knew well, they, that they wanted to lose. Look, everybody knows the tank was fucking in. That's the See, reason why it's not fired. 
Everybody knows that shit. Hey, me and you can, you can tell, tell you this. can tell by the play calling that the, the shit was yes, fucking. Dude, it was tank. tank. It was a tank. Was in. Like, I agree, JB, a hundred percent with you, and I'm sure anybody else will agree with you. It, players it don't tank. tank. That it is no question. Players don't tank. Coaches and general managers can put you in the right place to make sure you're competitive, which they were competitive all year. Every single game, pretty much, that they what? were at. I'd say two games that they yeah. weren't at. Yeah. Get your wow. ass they, they have wow. eight games. You, you do realize that they had eight games that they lost by one possession. Yeah. Right. And it all happened with them. I do realize that, right? Okay, what about the other nine? This is Frank's argument, not mine. Yeah, no, 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 no. Those are eight games that they lost. Eight games that they lost. That's not including they the three that they already just won. They straight up lost that game. They what about the other ones? What the fuck you all been? What about the other ones they lost? Yeah. Come, on, oh, yeah. Come on, man. Get your ass out of here with that. Wait, so, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, hold on. Casey, this one is shit about to get real heated in this motherfucker. Hold on. So you mean to tell me, hold on. So you mean to tell me you watched all these damn Bears games, right? Should I run down the fucking numbers? Should I run down the fucking teams and tell you the ones that they were down by one loss? Now, I'm not saying they was in no, every I, single game. I know that. I know that. There, there, was, was, there, was, there was probably about... About a there couple games that they was out of. That yeah, they, was a, that they were yeah. really competitive. But, uh, don't try to make it seem like we were the actually the three and what the fuck was it, 14 record that we are. We were way yes. better than Yes, they were. Okay. No, they were. No, they were. No, they were. They were. Maybe no. a little Everybody better. A maybe a little that, better, but nah, they weren't good, man. It this, this is my point. And, and Defensively, you are not good. So you're going to say, hold on, throw it back to Casey because as a former player yourself, how do you feel about that? Because I'm sorry. I can't lose on purpose. I just can't do it. Yeah, so that 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 that's good because I said that I don't know how a coach would ever walk into a locker room and say, "Hey, we need to figure out a way to lose today." I mean, yeah, you I you can call plays, so on and think like. But if a coach ever walked up to me and said, "We need to figure out how to lose the game," I mean, you're out of your fucking mind. Pardon my French, guys. I said, yeah, "Players, I'm, 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 I'm right ahead right yeah. and going to risk in my body." Every Thank day you. and and you know six days of practice and then on Sunday you're gonna tell me hey let's figure out how to lose the game today what do you mean then just forfeit the game that's how you lose if you want to lose yeah, I, 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 that, that might be not competitive enough though to you know sell yeah hey Casey <laughs> never apologize for no, never French in here <laughs> we speak French hey, fluently on this motherfucker there might be some kids <laughs> listening man I never I never know my kids <laughs> might be listening in another room. Yeah, that's <laughs> he's the mayor, so he, 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 he oh, yeah, that's right. Free. You're the mayor, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> right. Matter of fact, we'll curse for you. Don't matter. Are, don't you, stra- are you straight up <laughs> saying po- politics? They don't swear because I, I don't believe that. No, they do, Frank. I just maybe not um, live. I try not to, uh, yeah. I don't swear at board meetings. I'm, I might swear yeah, after exactly. board meetings, live, but and I, after. I, <laughs> I might swear after and sometimes before, but not definitely not during. <laughs> Like watching the Bears play, we know damn well we're all swearing. Absolutely. And I want to bring this to everybody's attention that's on here. So, Casey, we mentioned the Texans. That, to me, was a team that tried as hard as they could but really had no chance to win. The, yep. the two times they won and the tie, you know, that kind of thing. And this anomaly because think about it. You win on the second hardest play to convert in football. The first hardest play to convert is an onside kick. Yep. The second hardest is a damn Hail Mary. And they yeah. converted on a Hail Mary. The likelihood yep. of them win. And then, love you. That said, was so crazy to watch. Too. I'm going for two. Skip the tie. <laughs> skip the overtime. I'm going for two. Yeah. Because my guys, and this is where I say I have a lot of respect for him. Our guys came to me and said, Coach, we want to play to win. As they should. That's what I'm talking about. To me, that's true leadership. That's a true leader of men. Even puss over here, I can't, I can't honor that because let me tell you why. Because he's oh! talking all that, he talked all that hits BS, all that rah 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 stuff at the beginning of the year. Then all of a sudden, crickets. Yeah. I can't, I can't honor that guy. Now if he uh, come back and he's the bear hey, second. He did coach, yell that last oh, game where he shouldn't have. And we were saying straight up, like, dude, stop arguing the play. We don't want to win this game. Stop. Casey, let me uh give you a little disclaimer. Okay. 
JB up there never won a Eva Fuchs. He never won a pose. Yeah, JB JB wanted other people in there. So JB is right? gonna always sit up there and say that they're doing a terrible job. He 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 he's gonna be basically against every damn thing that they do. Every little every little minor mistake that they make, he's going to critique to the fullest. I mean, because father, it's not the people that he man. wanted in. This That's is we, we go through I, this shit. I don't need as as. And you want an old ass Jim Caldwell as the goddamn as coach Jim of the damn head well, hey, coordinator. I said go back ten years ago to 2013. Then Jim Caldwell, Bears I were ten and six, too. right? Brian's last season, they missed the playoffs because the Packers didn't have to play for anything. They already won the NFC North, and they lose to whoever they were playing yeah, that Sunday that ten game. years ago. So the Bears were ten and six and didn't get into the playoffs and they fired Lovey if you remember. Yeah. And what have they done in ten years? Nothing. Nothing. What? Nothing. Fired. Done a fucking thing. Five, 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 four more coaches. You've had four coaches <laughs> in ten years now. You had you had in two year in thirteen years you had two. You had Dick Teron for four and then you had Lovey for nine. Think yep. about that. Yep. So you fired four coaches in ten years now. Yeah, that's not good. So you guys yeah. think you think they should have fired Eberfuss after this year? No. I'm not saying to fire him. I'm just saying, you know, well, we're I know somebody about... up here thinks that they should have fired his ass. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who that one is. Yeah, My... but this this is the thing when when I'm comparing what you were saying with Lovey Smith with Houston, Lovey Smith knew he was getting fired at did the he? end of that game. How did he know? Is everybody knew? So I know he knew. How, how did everybody know? Everybody knew. He didn't even make it to Black to Monday. Like, I'd hate to say right. it. Everybody knew Lovey Smith was just literally a plug for this year, unless he won. But he was not given anything to win with, similar to Eberflus. But the difference is Poles traded away every legitimate player you had on this roster because he knew he wasn't going to win with that roster. So he says, I am going to tank. I'm not going to let the players know I'm going to tank. I want them to go out there and prove something, prove that they want to be a part of this rebuild and a part of this franchise. And to me, I look at this season as one of the greatest tank jobs I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, greatest tank job. Well, I'll put it to you like tank this. Tank job was me and you. Go ahead, go ahead, Casey. What do you think? No, 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 no. I'm listening still. I'm, I'm nah, still. because I mean – all right, so we all probably seen the movie Major League, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually just watched so, it before the broadcast. So what did the owner want to do? She wanted hey. to have the team lose so they can get the fuck up out of there. She got rid of everything from them motherfuckers having a luxury jet to that piece of shit they did. Yeah, they they died. Know, <laughs> right. You know, you sit up there, draft got rid of day. all their hot tubs, huh? It was draft day, not Major League. No, he's league. talking about Major not, League. It was See? Major League. He's, He's talking about Major League. league. Ten, go ahead. Indians trying to move uh, go watch Major League, the movie. You'll see oh, Charlie Sheen, Charlie Tom Sheen. Barringer. Yeah. 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 Charlie Sheen. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. But she basically got rid of everything that could possibly help those guys yeah, win that. games. But they didn't. And that's sort of what Ryan Poles did. He got rid of everybody that had a big contract that could possibly help them guys win any type of games. He wanted to blow it up. There's not a GM in the league that's going to sit up there and say, yeah, I'm going to get rid of everybody. I'm so you're telling me this Tom Mountain, instead of flying American, they flew Spirit in Frontier? <laughs> that's good again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, Casey. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Nice. That's exactly what they flew. No Wi-Fi, none funny. of that shit. That was funny. Yeah, all that right. was good. I, listen, I'm not against – I'm not, I'm just saying he did – he did trade away everybody to say he once Ro, once Roquan and then you got rid of uh, Robert Quinn and I mean what what happened to Robert Quinn this year? The guy had, he a, had an awful year too. Yeah. Oh, oh we that is one 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 again. Matrix King Freezy in sixteen. It's like the Matrix up in here. Look at. <laughs> You got to move to different spots of the house to get good connection. In. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, man. Look at me. We'll try this spot. So we moving all around now. And when you go back and watch this, you should see that Matrix move you just pulled. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, you were yeah like, that was like. <laughs> Did I move you back? Are, my that reminds me of. 
Oh, yeah. Hey, he had a good game. He had a good game. Let, yes, let me pull it up. Wait, let, let, let me find it. Let me find it. Oh, oh shit. Damn it, T. You go on the I'm Desi Jones. And you heard me. <laughs> that, that, uh, JB started a little trend with that that has taken off where that's Velas Jones, but everybody started calling him Velvet. Yeah. Velvet that's Jones. great, man. Yeah. So what do you think of Velvet? Yeah. I mean, Velas. What do you think of Macy? What do I think about who? Velvet. What Bayless Jones? I don't call him Bayless. 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 Ever, ever, Mac, Coach Mac. No, uh, Bayless, Bayless Jones. Jones, their wide the, receiver that the they third, drafted this year. The, uh, third round pick. So I see. That's how bad I am, man. I, I don't. Here, listen. I think they. I think they got. They a good candy kept muffin punts in the season. Oh yeah, in the, the beginning. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, there it is. There's a few guys that I just don't know on the team. Honestly, man, I, and that's I just, sad uh, that you know, he's somebody everybody should know. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know why they got rid of Allen Robinson, who was their number one guy. Um, why'd you let him go? I mean, I like to who, who, who's the Daryl Mooney or Darnell Mooney? I like. Yeah, he's still, still there. He was still there. He, he got, got hurt. hurt. He got yeah, he hurt. He had an ankle injury though, right? that kept him yeah. out the last half of the season. I think you got a, a good two-headed monster with Herbert and Montgomery. I mean, is I, I think the, those guys both. If they can stay healthy, I mean, here the key in the NFL is staying healthy. Yeah. The 49ers, you, in any sport, I'm not saying just the NFL. I think in any sport is staying healthy. You know, the 49ers, what what Kyle Shanahan has done out there, went in 10 straight, and he's on his third string quarterback and went through injury after injury. That's that's pretty do, damn coaching right there, honestly. That's, that's damn good coaching. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. and I, I don't I don't know Kyle Shanahan never met him, but I got to say you're on your third string quarterback and you're. You're playing pretty well. And Jimmy Garoppolo is going to get another chance. I'll tell you right now. Yeah, he's going to get a starting oh, he, stop. So which is going to hurt the Bears trying to trade back because somebody's going to take Jimmy. And somebody's probably going to give Baker Mayfield another shot, too. Yeah, he somebody will. Going to the Rams. God bless him. Yeah. Right. God bless him. I now, mean, I have my, gonna... my own theories about that, but I want to go back to something. Uh, is is the Bears bringing – are the Bears bringing Montgomery back, Jamar? Um – I don't think it's happening. I don't. And he was yeah, kind of telling. I don't, telling, I don't know if you guys saw his uh, tweet, Instagram, whatever it was, where they showed him like hugging Justin, almost like saying mm-hmm. this is 32's last ride. Taking right pictures like, at the end of the game on the field, too. Yeah. Like uh, that gives me kind of like an eerie feeling. Like he might not be. Yeah. yeah he might I would hate to see that. him. And it's going to stink because I really pulled for Montgomery to get signed because, like how you said, Casey, that is a great one two punch. Yeah, no, I think they both run hard. They're both young kids still. I mean, look, when you're 28, 29, or 30 now as a running back, they chalk you up as being done. Right. You know, once you get to that second contract, if you even get through that second contract, after that, nobody's giving you anything. They're giving you one year deals the rest of your, the time. I mean, look how many one year deals AP played on. Yeah. At the end of it, you know, it was one year, one year back in Minnesota, one year down in New Orleans, and then, you know, one year up in Seattle. It's just like, hey, whoever's going to sign me to a one year deal, I'll take it. Unless you're the ageless wonder like uh, Frank Gore. <laughs> I love Frank Gore. I think, I think, I think Frank's like 40 years old. So but I, right I want to say Frank Gore did the same thing at the end of his career, a bunch of one year deals. Yeah. That's why you saw him like on yeah. Buffalo, and then you saw him. On um, I forgot the Jets. The, the, I forgot he was on the Colts. He was on the Jets. He went to the Colts. I, same thing. And I mean, I think David Montgomery. I I kind of think he's got like that Josh Jacobs type of style yeah, of running, which is a huge style, especially in cold and weather here in Chicago. That's the leading rusher in the league. They that's better pay Josh Jacobs. Speaking of that, that yeah, kid's he's a, a free man. agent. They better pay him. Well, I mean, I don't know, school. man. You know, they kind of fucked up over there in Las Vegas. Man. <laughs> yeah, I agree. They what messed they up a lot of stuff because now Devontae, like how you were saying in the broadcast, you wouldn't go with Devontae there, too. Oh, well, that, that's, no, I well, would well, not. Here, here's and the thing. I did not sound like that either, guys. You did. It was close. It was close. Don't be like, surprised if you see the Oakland Raiders go get Jimmy Garoppolo because he was with Josh McDaniels. And with I, the thought, I thought about that, and that's only if Tom Brady decides not to come there, then they'll take Jimmy. I, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. But then also you lead towards um, New England because Belichick and Mac Jones are not seeing eye to eye either. Would Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah, they, they ain't right? canning him right now. They ain't mm-hmm. canning Mac Jones right now. No, no I, I, it doesn't mean they might not bench him. It depends on what Be- Belichick runs that show. 
And I guess they got into it the last few games of the season. They did, but at the same time, I mean, this is arguably the greatest coach in modern football times. Yeah. He's going to find a way to get his way. It's either hell, he'll put he'll start Bailey Zappy again just to make Zappy look good. But again, he's just going to do that because that's what Belichick does. But well, Zach Wilson is an idiot in, in the for the Jets. What he said today or yesterday that's that's kid's I, an idiot. That's a lot, Zach Wilson. Yeah, that's that, that kid's an idiot. What, what did he say? Baker Mayfield said something about in. if if they bring a veteran in here, I'm gonna make his life a living hell. Like, yeah. what, what, what kind of teammate are you, dude? What you you should want the team to get better. It's dude, like well, nothing I, wrong if, with if having. If they brought in another linebacker, I'd say bring it on. I want the competition. That's gonna That's make me it. better. There you go, because we're because we're ball players. Yeah, because yep. what you do. You gotta you gotta it. <laughs> and, yep. and and that tells you right there. Aren't you glad we dodged the bullet because some wanted us to have the Jets draft Justin Fields and some wanted Zach Wilson to fall right. out? So I was like, no. Right. <laughs> I'm so happy ball. the J E T S grabbed that son because I I honestly don't know how the hell did he jump <clears throat> Justin Fields as far as being a, a draft prospect. How, where the fuck did that come from? He oh, played yeah, at right. fucking BYU and Justin Fields yeah. played in the Big Ten. You're, you're flipping with the Jets, too. Let's not forget the 49ers traded four picks to move up to grab somebody, and it wasn't Justin Fields either. Can you imagine Justin Fields playing with Can you imagine Justin Fields playing with Shane? We got to wait to see about him, at least Trey Lance. Yeah, because, I, I mean, he, he, he's been hurt, but Justin with this Fields, guy, this guy's been playing, and he – Look like shit, and he's throwing everybody else under the bus. So yeah, he, he he's gonna be on a one way ticket out of New York before you know it. That's one town you don't mess around with. The media eat you alive there, and they're already yeah, doing that. Do that in New York, and he's he's showing he's not a team guy. Yep. Mm-hmm. And in football, you know it's all about. I need you other ten guys to help. Yep. Me. So speaking of New York, can we kick the tires on this? Uh, uh, what's the boy's name? I forgot his damn name. Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley. How are you forgetting Saquon Barkley? Because he's getting hip to me. He is right. New York right now. He's, he's what? There's nobody in anywhere in New York. He is New York right now. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck are you talking I'm about? I'm not in New York. I'm in Chicago. <laughs> he said Saquon, Saquon Barkley is New York, is what he said. Saquon Barkley New York was New York. I'll give you my opinion. Oh, Saquon Barkley, that's what I'm saying. They're going to franchise one of them. They got to keep Daniel Jones and they got to keep um, Saquon. And right, one of them's you, getting the franchise because right. I don't think they could pay them both. Yeah, and, and you crazy as hell I talking about fuck Saquon Barkley. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. You're, you're, you're you, you, you obviously don't know who you're talking about. You're <laughs> so, so, talking about football that here, easy football. Yeah, tell no new first of all, no talk new Aaron new Yankees Judge. talk on this show ever. Yeah, Yankees can <laughs> damn yeah, them. Yeah, fuck right fuck fucking Yankees. Shout out to Curtis Clay, by the way. Um <laughs> the reason we brought that up is because uh some kind of interview happened where they happened to ask Saquon if he didn't be, uh remain a New York Giant, what were some favorable destinations? The first off his list was Chicago. And you know, we we've we've had Arguably two of the greatest running backs ever in the history of football. Hands and, arguably. You know, some people like other people. I'm just saying arguably like. So you're okay. talking about like Anthony Thomas and. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. That was, that, was, that was a nice one right that there. That was fun. Yeah. Oh, we don't, that do, was the as as we don't do the Michigan bander uh, over here. That's right. Yeah. 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 Curtis like Enos. <laughs> yeah. I like they train. No, talk about Curtis Eden, man. Don't do that. Like Curtis Enos, man. man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, remember, I, like, I think he just I bought a jersey of Curtis Enos for five bucks off eBay, and I sold it. <laughs> I went to that game in there, and I was famous. Come on, five dollars is how much it costs. Five dollars on eBay that jersey cost. Number thirty nine. Five dollars. Thirty nine. Five dollars on eBay. This was like wow. ten Thank years you, ago. Anthony. Thank you. Leave him right there in New York. We go. Why? Tell me this. Why? Because we have two better than service. Why? Tell me this. Issue. Why? Because the thing is, is this. If you, you want, want playmakers, you, you want playmakers. You going to let me answer? No. You going to let me answer? <laughs> we'll we'll let you, you answer when you admit Eddie no, Jackson had I'm a good gonna, year. I'm going to answer the question. Because we have two better than serviceable running backs now. Why should we go get a running back and pay a lot of money and then have a – Less serviceable running back behind him. 
That would be stupid. Let's keep you our still have Herbert on a cheap. You, would, about to say you still got Herbert for two keep, more you years, right? Herbert as your second and yeah. switch with Saquon instead of Montgomery. Like, okay, I so myself, why, why pay? Why pay all that money when we what, have what you call all that money? When you're, we have you're talking other maybe six million dollars more than what Montgomery. When we have was. other needs that I we need to that. address before running back. Why are we going to spend a lot of money you on just, Saquon? You, you do realize that we have 118 fucking million dollars, right? 125. No, oh, well, 125. I'm sorry, even more. And depending mm. on if the salary cap goes up, it's going to be even more. So you want playmakers, right? So that's we, what y'all said. We, have, we need playmakers, right? And you're going to get a Home lot of hitters, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. That's what the we fuck he is. Well, you got we a lot have of other areas to too. address. What do you think about it, Casey? I think Saquon needs to stay in New York. Honestly, that's just my opinion. But if I think if, for him, you know, it's better to stay in New York. You go get the best available people on the market. But uh, you know, here's a here's the kicker: the Bears ain't gonna pay him the amount of money he's gonna ask. They're not gonna pay that for a running back. They're gonna give Montgomery a a three four year deal and be happy with it. Pay him a, a, as minimal as they can. Keep the other guy. They need defensive guys. They need a receiver. They damn sure need some offensive linemen, as we all know. I mean, thank you. Oh, we do. Nobody's questioning. Yeah, no doubt. They got a lot of needs that they need to fill besides going out and paying Saquon, you know, market value, which he's going to get some. He's going to get fifteen million a year. He will. Yeah. Isn't that what we said? Fifteen to sixteen yeah, guys. 15, yeah, yeah. He will. And that's you know what? And, 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 and that's not here, bad. You're going to have to because he's still Montgomery, working with one hundred and ten. Seven eight. You're gonna have to pay Montgomery at least. Yeah, you still, yeah, like you said, you still work with 110, which will go and get you offense alignment, defense alignment, and anything else you need. Let's not forget, you have the number one pick in the draft. You do not need a quarterback. If you are gonna trade back and pick up possibly four or five more trade picks, you're looking at more help in those positions with that as well. I agree. I don't. They should not keep that number one pick. I think they trade. They better trade it. They better, they trade, better it. Absolutely. They trade it. They better trade it. And no. but I want to I want to go back to possibly Ryan Paul's mindset because we really don't know the cat. Mm-hmm. And the one person we know that went to school with him, a former guest of our show, he's kind of keeping that close to the vest about how Ryan Paul just is as a person. But in my opinion, I've seen flashes of where Ryan Paul wants to be the smartest guy in the room. I lost some of his draft picks, but I also can say. Hell, he might be able with the draft picks and the money, he might feel he can play fantasy football and get the best of the best of the best that's available if he wants to, because it'll be right there for him. And I wouldn't, if, if he, if right now, I know T, you don't like it, but I'll switch the person. Let's say he goes after T Higgins or he goes after, you know, the next tier of you know, top wide receiver, an Elijah Moore or somebody like that. Yeah. And he goes after, Orlando Brown for left tackle. And he just goes and goes and goes. And next thing you know, he does a turnaround like the Eagles did. Remember the Eagles drafted, uh, got a, what's the name? Carson Wentz up out of there. They didn't look good. They brought in Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts took over. They went to the playoffs. Now Eagles are the number one team. If he follows that mold, right, then we might be working with something. But nowhere in this particular draft, no matter how many picks you get, are you going to fill all the holes and this no. is where you talking about Casey because there's too many of them. Yeah, uh-huh. there's a lot of holes. Which so is this why still you might be a two, maybe three year process. It still could be. Okay. I mean, it could be. Nobody can see The Eagles already had a pretty, a pretty decent offensive line. They got a great Absolutely. leader in Kelsey. Yeah. They got that one of their Lane, tackles is Johnson. Lane Johnson. Guy. They had Peters, in which we got last year. Yeah. So, and then you go to their defense line. Fletcher Cox. They had some really good defensive linemen already. They had some pieces of the puzzle. You had you drafted um, Smith from Alabama. You trade for AJ Brown. Well, yeah, there you go. You, you know what I mean. You 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 made some good moves on the and and Jalen Hurts. He, he's not a knockoff player. This kid can play. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and that's why I said that's the mold, in my opinion, that they need to go to. Because anybody that thinks we're going to draft, you know, eleven starters in this draft, and we're going to like that—that that very rarely. No, it's never going to happen like and, that. And, you know, I think me standing in my my shoes right now, I look at two Bears teams that come to mind right away. One, 
your brother was on that turned, you know, we went to the Super Bowl, right? Lovey Smith came in, did his thing, but that wasn't the cupboard was bare type team, right? The only other closest thing I could think of the rebuild was when I want to say it was right after Dave Wands that before Dick Jerron got the 13 and 3 team. It was kind of dicey. Like they went and got Barry Mentor and they got some other pieces and guys like that. Barry they, Mentor. They, they, they hit they hit on um Bryant. They hit on Mike Brown in the later. You know what I'm saying? Like their draft picks, they were coming hot and heavy and they were hitting. I think don't that's... see that in this draft. To where it's going to be a turnaround that quick, and then think, think of the people that Jerry Angelo drafted in the late rounds. You're talking about a Mike fixed. Brown, a yeah, Charles Tillman, a yes. Lance. Uh, you guys remember Bobby Gray? I remember, yeah, hey, solid contributors or Hall yeah. of Fame players. Yeah, he, Period. Did, he, Period. he drafted some good players that could have, you know, Mike injury ridden, but Mike had a great six, seven years here. Mike. Was a Mike standout. Brown if he could have played, if he could have stayed healthy, that. he would have played 12, 13 years in the NFL. He was a good. He, he would have been one of the greats. He would have been yeah. one of the greats if he could have yeah. stayed healthy. Man. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. No hold about. I don't think you. I mean, R.W. Ugly. McCorders. I don't yeah. think R.W. Yep. McCorders. R. R. Yep. I mean, come okay. on. There's there's some guys back there that you, you, you know find. that uh, I don't know. There's so many of them that I think about these days that. You know, back when when they were played, I mean, there, there's some good draft picks that Jerry Angelo had for a long time. He was there, I mean, what, 10, he, 12 years? It, easy, because remember, they even they had the other linebacker core that had Roosevelt Colvin and, yeah, and, 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 and Warren Colvin and boys. Like, they, that was the bread and butter, the calling card, hitting on round three, round four, round five, round six in some, in some sense. But right now, when you dig into the draft, because a lot of people think, Oh, this is a wide receiver draft. It's actually not. It's actually a no. defensive line draft. It's D line heavy, and you got a couple of sprinkles of some linebackers. You got a couple you get some of some sprinkles. linebackers. Yeah, you do, and you got a couple of sprinkles of some offensive line, which projectedly will be gone. The ones we want would probably be gone by the second round. Right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I get it, man. So yeah. I, that's why I said I want to. I want to pump our brakes to see what he's going to do. If he wants to kick, if he wants to go and grab Saquon, am I going to be mad? Hell no. I will. Hell, I might give me a jersey. I don't know. <laughs> this is what I say. <laughs> I send you a jersey, JB. There's only one jersey you got to wear, brother. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a Saquon, that's going to keep fucking defensive coordinators up at night. You got him and fucking him, Justin, Justin Hill, Hill. Yeah, in the fucking backfield. David Moore. We'll stop you from having to run Justin so much. I did. Huh? You said what? Yeah. You David will. You won't have, have to run Justin. Justin, run Justin, Justin so much. No disrespect you to like David. running the option with those two? Like, shit. Yeah. No, no yeah. disrespect yeah. to David Montgomery. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. it. But How the fuck is everybody trying to talk at the same goddamn time? It's not Because we are that talented and that much in sync. Right. No, I feel like I'm at a board meeting. No. Right, exactly. <laughs> I feel like I'm at a board meeting right now. Everybody's talking. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> mute, 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 mute. Yeah. I mean, oh, you it, got those two guys It'll be interesting. You got those two guys back there. That is a fucking defensive coordinator's fucking nightmare. I would rather try to find a number one. Two home runs. What about the defense? You still gonna adjust the defense in the fucking draft? You still got money. You still got a lot. You act like we got fifty fucking million dollars. We got, according to you, one hundred and twenty-five fucking million dollars. You want to have a bunch of rookies on 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 the on the on? Uh, no, I do not. Because what I'm going to do is available. Who is available right now in the draft that is really going to help us? Uh, Will Anderson. Not not in the draft. I'm sorry. In free Will Anderson. Anderson. Uh, free agency. Well, okay, you yeah. got you got the run. Yeah. I want the only one. You better go out the draft. I will throw all the money. Well, at him. Well, what you call is up too. Uh, what's his name for um the Eagles? Casey, uh, uh, you these motherfuckers. Not you now, these what's up, guys. Go home. Yeah, these those cakes. I didn't do it that time. They all tried. To, I did it. They all tried okay, to talk at the same time again. Easy. I told you when I bring you in, I bring you in. <laughs> you asked who's available in free agency and Casey, you're running oh, the game. Oh, there he is. There he is. So, Casey, what do you think about this? Chris trying to argue me down. That ain't me. Saquon comes <laughs> the defense. <laughs> that ain't me, fellas. That wasn't me for once. 
<laughs> he said it wasn't you, huh? <laughs> you playing for a lot of things. It wasn't me that time. <laughs> well, look, one of our guys, he he always has an opinion. But well, he's always got to sneak in here to say his opinion. Well, we're gonna bring him in to give his opinion and then he out. All right, so we're gonna bring in our guy easy. He talks fast. What's up, guys? It's me, Easy. I talk fast, but I'm still pretty easy to understand. Get it? Casey, <laughs> uh, I just want to give you a shout out for uh, oh, not. Cool. I want to. Well, that's what I do. Uh, Casey, I want to give you a shout out for, uh, you know, unlike your brother, not turning your back on the bald community. I think that's really cool. Uh, and I respect <laughs> it. Um, so, you know, just shout out for you. Shout out to you for that. that man. Also, um, I, I, I got to say, I'm with T Nick on this one. We cannot right. build a defense without you know, a good mix of experience. You got to get people who have been at it before. Yes. We want rookies on the defensive side of the ball, but the big thing is building up the line with Will Anderson and, you know, big beefy guys who have done it before people who have a lot of NFL experience. And one more thing I do want to add, which is something that uh, it's, it's been, it's been touched on. And this is, you know, you know, the media has been talking about how, Oh, Justin Fields might not be the guy. The bears might want to draft a quarterback. I think that's total bullshit, and I'm sure you all think that's total bullshit too. However, I like that that's become a narrative in the media. I think that's such a good thing because what that means is it's out there that the Bears might want to move on and they might want to draft Bryce Young. And I'm not saying we're going to do that, but if teams think the Bears are interested in doing that, it kind of adds to their leverage in some ways, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, and that's kind of why, you know, here on this show and, you know, in the group and whatnot, yeah. I'm absolutely going to, um, you know, like I'll say, like Fields is the guy, Fields is the guy for sure. But, you know, if people are, you know, sharing stories on social media about how, you know, they might move on from Fields, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like go out of my way to pick battles with that kind of thing. Because I think ultimately, at the end of the day, you want as much leverage as possible when it comes to trading that number one pick. And I hope they end up doing it. I hope they end up making that move. That's about it. Okay. All right. Well, no, you can stay here now because all I want I want all of us to weigh in on this posted note that I'm about to So some motherfucker on Twitter. Everybody yeah, knows Twitter. 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 He's, he's well, a you're about dude. you're about to see his name. Shut up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm about to post what he posted today, and we are about to let his ass have it. So he posted that he thinks the Bears should draft Bryce Young and trade Justin Fields. Ain't that some shit? So we'll start <laughs> with Casey. So, so what this is the bust out Tannenbaum from uh, the Jets, right? Yeah, that GM who doesn't that have a job GM. anymore. Right. That piece of shit GM. That's all I got to say, right? Yeah, More that's all you need to say. <laughs> there ain't much to say about it. He's a bust out GM from now. He's getting paid by ESPN to make quotes like that. So, so we click on it and talk about it, and here we are wasting our time about Tannenbaum saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say his name right. Yes, it's it's bullshit and it's a waste of time, but I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm exactly. Hey, we still I, have I'm Skip here for Davis it too. And all these other people out there, so I mean. So Frank, what what do you got to say about that? Well, shit? That's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Yeah, it, it, right. I mean, th this is the man. thing. The only point he made, and it's still not even a good point, was that you have two years under Justin Fields already. You could keep two years under a rookie contract. That was the point that he was making. It wasn't an attack of Justin Fields, but it's just like now you're retooling. You just saw what you got out of Justin Fields. You kind of built an offense with shit around him, and it still was a somewhat successful offense. But now you're going to go bring in Bryce Young, who is – what did I look at this day? I think he's 34 pounds lighter. He's 180 pounds. He's probably yeah, he's, pounds he's better off with the he White is, Sox. He is five foot nine, I think. Five foot 11. ten. Five he's listed. 11. He's listed at okay. five. He's lifted, listed so at five eleven. He is somewhat not. smaller for most modern era quarterbacks nowadays. 
Can you put him behind this offensive line that we would have had and tell me that he would have survived? No. He would have died by week two. It would have been I, no I, chance. I, I still think, you know, I, I love Bryce Young. I love the way he plays. I just don't know how he's going to work in the yeah, NFL when he's so small. Uh, I mean, maybe in a maybe in a dome, maybe like with the Saints or something. But like, but and that's why. But that's exactly what I was talking about. I like that people are talking like this because someone's going to want Bryce Young, and if people are like, oh, "Oh, I don't want the Bears to get Bryce Young, more likely to trade up. So then we can be like John Lynch and act like we want to get him, but we don't exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So foul mouth, what you think about that shit? I'm down for it. Huh? Fuck no. <laughs> I was about to say, what? Hey, you played that oh, off pretty damn well, dude. That yeah, yeah you really did. You had me going. That's good good. Actor right I even yeah. said, uh, I've been known to act, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I think absolutely not. Tell you the truth, if Justin Fields was in this draft, Justin Fields would be the number one quarterback taken. Facts. I don't care that Brush didn't he win the Heisman or something. Last year, I think so. Yeah, yeah, last year. Yeah, he won the Heisman last year. Yep. I don't give a fuck if he did. Tell you the truth, I Tim think Tim Tebow won the Heisman. Yeah, I think Justin Fields is a better quarterback than Bryce Young when he was in college, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> also, like Justin has meat on his bones. You know, he's not he's, he's not a skinny guy. kid. By no means, he could take a hit. We know he could take a hit. That's something that I got a lot of confidence about this year is that this kid could. You know, he's not afraid to be tough and it's not to say that bryce young is gonna be like a bust in the nfl agree agree right. i i think i hope that he does good things in the nfl not against us but he can fuck around and beat everybody else ass i don't give a shit long as he loses <laughs> to us no jb what you think i wonder how people become gms do they have pictures of people that they literally are being blackmailed about because for ryan tannebaum to even say some ludicrous ass shit like this just lets me know, like, I know why you on ESPN spewing this garbage. Man. Like, I really, really know now. Mm-hmm. And I know some owner was like, damn, I hired you as my GM. What was wrong with me? <laughs> it just destroyed my reputation. And you see it now. Because for that even to be a topic of conversation, because he's got no skin in the game for the Bears. He's not saying that because he wants to help the Bears up their price. He's saying it because he wants to be another one of those smartest guy in the room type people. But if you do your homework, Ryan Tannenbaum, Justin Fields threw 41 touchdowns and, th- and three picks when he was at Ohio State. His, la- his uh, best with season. With an offensive line. With an offensive line. Justin Fields has done more running with the Bears than he has his whole collegiate career. That includes Georgia. So what are we really talking about? Another guy who got paid big bucks to not know shit. (laughs) Just like that. That's my that's my take on that. True story. Okay. So So Casey, give give me give me your uh, thing on what you're going to be doing if you're the Bears GM sitting at number one. I'm going to trade it. I'm going to pick up some. you ain't gonna get Will Anderson. He's not. But gonna how go far back would you be willing to trade it? Like that. That's the. When you're saying no, Will Anderson, if you somehow pull Houston's string because they want a quarterback, they want Bryce Young. Well, he's gonna be they there. They try to trade he, one for two, and you could still get Will Anderson in like three or four extra picks. Yeah. No, you could fall. I, I think you stay within the top five. You could still pick up some. You know, you could still get a defensive guy. In the top five, I mean, this kid from Georgia just declared this D tackle yeah. last night or defensive end who's going to yeah. now he's the he's number a one player, right? And he's so, a, he's a player we need too. He's a three technique. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's but, we're talking Carter. I, I've I've, I've yeah, really Carter. not been a fan with him over the last few games. I I, I don't know. And I know I, I, so, I have a theory about that, Frank. I think no, no, so you said no, trade yeah, back top five. Up first, yeah, you said trade back top five. Are you in that realm of that? That Colts mix, like trying to trade with them and get whatever they have in the later round, in the second round, and then a first rounder, and maybe more next season. Yeah, I, I you know, the, the the model seems to work for Bill Belichick, right? He collects as many draft picks as he can. Of course, his development of the process is better than the Bears have been, unfortunately, right? 
he always just seemed to develop the later round players and it's like, well, where'd this kid come from? Well, he picked him up in the sixth round, you know, 10 years ago or, you know, five years ago. And now he's a, a pro bowl or so on and so forth. So, you know, like I said earlier with Jerry Angelo, they seem to pick up um, later round players and evaluate them. And they turned out to be pretty decent, play- really good players for us. And the, I always feel like the more picks you had, the better off. And with the cap space we have too now at 118 million or whatever Foulmouth said, 120 million or something. I said, you know, we we got a lot of irons in the fire where we could do a lot of good things this year. Really, we really can. And it may not be where where we're doing it in 2023, where we have a great year. You know, is seven wins next year considerably a good season? Eight wins? I, I, don't, I don't know. Is are. it? No, because we could have technically right. had that this year. We could have. One of them we is against Green Bay, so, and yes. No, so is, that, is that a good <laughs> season? I would have to say no, right? I would say no too. If, if you I mean, really look, look at it for what it is, well, I'm kind of seeing a playoff push next look, year. That's what I want. It depends on Make if eight playoff. wins gets you into the playoffs. You know they're going to be better, better next year. Yeah. Great point, Casey. Because now it ain't always it ain't about the Packers. It's about the Vikings and it's about the Lions. I'd argue it might not even be about the Vikings next year, JB. I you think the Vikings are frauds. I feel like they're getting on a down. Oh. Lost Casey. That's that. Uh, your phone died, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's He's in there. There he is. Damn, that's that. Oh, that's that. Knows, Kroger, that's that Kroger modem he got. What? Huh? Kroger. I'm telling you, man. Kroger. My dial up is still dialing. Shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got an Ethernet cord. <laughs> Look, I, uh, you're gonna see a lot of you're gonna see a lot of teams pick Detroit next year to win the NFC North. I'm telling you now, Detroit. Oh yeah, be a sleeper next year. How could you not? The way they finish, they're, the they're season. not a sleeper anymore. I mean, you won eight out of ten games to finish the season, or something like that. Nine out of ten games, and you know he came out today and said Jared Goff good enough to be my quarterback next year. He proved himself. Yeah. Had 24 touchdowns, three or four interceptions. Played his tail off when nobody wanted him. He played pretty well. The defense is going to be – they're going to get better on defense. I think they were 30th or 31st this year. But yeah, they got the Rams pick. Yeah, they're going to be a good team next year. Another – I mean, they finished strong. Yeah, that, That's another thing, too, with the draft. Like, a lot of people were saying the Lions would be considered moving up to go get Will Anderson to play on the other side of Hutchinson. I, like, I, oh, and, they, and they got two first round draft picks. Oh, would we? Um, I would not want to make that. The scary thing with that would would you want that as a Bear fan? No, to be what? playing alongside on both sides, Hutchinson and Will Anderson, like that'd be some well, scary. This, this the only thing I said to that. If they're on the lines, they're gonna bite my kneecaps off, man. No, no, <laughs> I don't want to. Well, I don't think I think what would be a smarter move for the Lions is not to go get Will Anderson. But go to get Jalen Carter. Why? Because for the simple fact, because they have that other rookie that's actually second in the NFL to Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson. You're yeah. right, yeah. and their big problem is against the run. That's actually it's against the run. So Jalen Carter would be better for them. They want to Carter, trade up for Jalen uh, Carter. They could have him. That's but, right. Take that, Mike Tenenbaum. Where the fuck your name is? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me let me point something out to you guys, and just kicking numbers, right? Six and thirteen, I think, of the Lions pick, something like that. Six and yeah, thirteen. Yeah, because they got that Rams pick. Yeah. So if you did make that 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 trade, right? At six, guess what you can get? Clemson and you can get Miles Murphy. Man, you can get uh Jared Verse, as Chris has pointed out. Found I don't think he's out. coming out. I think he, he, he changed. He's, he's gonna stay. I think he, I'm gonna Google, but I think he's gonna stay. Even even still. You have options, and guess what you can do? You can get the best offensive lineman or the best wide receiver available as well. And that's kind of like having what they what's that uh saying? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Go on and get both of them. Yep. I still don't think negotiating with the Lions is a good idea. No, you don't no. negotiate with terrorists. It's, it's only two make yeah. teams. Well, the well they did. They they negotiated. Thank you, with Tina. <laughs> but it's only two teams, y'all. It's only two teams that of of right now that I know. They can give you two first round picks to where you're not bottoming out. See, That's I think Detroit that and Seattle. I would not mind getting Seattle. A, I don't know if they're getting a quarterback. 
I wouldn't mind. Well, it doesn't matter. They still they suck against well, the run too. The I wouldn't mind getting a 2024 20, first round pick and a 2023 20, first round pick because it, it's almost like kind of an insurance plan. You know, if it doesn't work out, we still got that extra first round pick next year. That's well, kind of what, that's pick what the Giants did with us, and the Giants are in the playoffs now. So, yeah, we preach in the same language. Yep. 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 And I, if page. I wanted, if I wanted to get a first round pick next year, though, too, I'd want to pick a shit team that I'm planning on who's not going to be that good next year either. Like Houston. Like well, the line, the line. I'm going to be the first to say. When what about Arizona? Arizona might not be that good either. It's not that bad. Oh, I mean, Murray's not playing, so they're going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be bad. Well, the Lions show you they don't care what happens in the division. They traded one of the best tight ends in the division. In the division. To a they don't care. Then they they still beat him. Yeah, right. they traded yep. that Hawkinson kid. Hawkinson. You know, he was the, the best player on the team, so to speak, and they traded him away to Minnesota. So, yep, yeah, that that you know, shocked me so at the time. But it worked out. Day, especially work. for the capital. And the thing, the thing, the that thing does. about this is, if you have dark, what's happening? The thing about this is of where, if I'm Ryan Poles, I'm hoping he's. He's as a former offensive lineman, I would think he needs to build the trenches, both defense and, and offense first. If Justin is their guy, if Justin is truly their guy, if you get that pick next year, you have two picks, regardless of who's first, second, third, or whatever. If you really feel that comfortable with what you got moving forward, and we're a piece away, which could be a receiver, some kind of way package that for Marvin Harrison Jr. Amen. If I would do something. anything possible to get him next year. Well, that, I mean, to me, that's just smart money. That's just smart money. Chelsea oh, Jerry yeah. Rice's kid is uh coming on the He's scene now. He's coming out. I thought he was coming out this year. Oh. Rice? Jerry Rice's son. Isn't he coming out? He got two sons. One of them's coming out this year, right? I think I, I thought it was next year, but I could be wrong. Okay, I, I mean, we'll, have to, well, Chris, you got the thing. We can look that up. It'll be fun but, to get J- Marvin Harrison and Jerry Rice on the same team. But that's but here, it would be. But, but here's, here's, here's the thing, too, and this is where I wanted to go back a little bit, Casey. So no. Do you really – like, how much faith do you have in the coaching staff? And I'm speaking solely Eberflus, Getsy, and Williams, because obviously we know line coaches change, tight end coaches change, linebackers coaches change. They We already lost our DB coach. He went to uh, UCF, I think, or USF to be the head coach. He went back to his uh, alma mater. So what do you think of those three main coaching positions? One, do you have any faith in them? And two, what would you change? That's for you, Casey. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to it's hard to evaluate the D coordinator, right, JB? Because you trade don't have away, sir. Because he don't have anything, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. So I, you're gonna you're evaluated D coordinator on you know you trade away your best player in Roquan, so to speak, and you were riddled with injuries in the on the back end. So I, I said, you know, it's hard, but even as an OC. You're, you're not going to keep running Justin like this. It's, it's proven this year you're going to beat the kid up. You, you just can't do it. it it's not going to it's not going to be productive football. Yeah, running the RPOs are great, and they're awesome. You're going to kill this kid, though. I mean, by the end of the season, he couldn't even walk. He didn't – you know, he couldn't – he's got shoulder injuries. He's beat up with his knees. I mean, everything. It, it shows you, though, you know, with the running quarterbacks, it's tough. Look at Lamar right now. Let's talk about this. Lamar's beat up. Never ready in the playoffs. Jalen's hurt. Jalen's beat up. Justin's beat up. You know, they're all beat up. I said, you know, even Daniel Jones from the Giants, you know, he's somewhat of a run, not a running quarterback, but he runs quite a bit for quarterbacks in New York. And he's a big kid, too. But I said he was beat up during the season. So Mm -hmm. it's just not, uh, you know. Um, I'm not sold on on any of them, so to speak. I'm not sold on any of the coaches' staff because what have you really showed me going three and fourteen and losing eight nine straight games? That is what yeah. you showed me. What do we get out of it? Yeah, but I mean, th- this is the one thing, Casey, and I know we always would talk about this on the show with Justin Fields running and everything. Um, and I agree. I don't want him running as much as he is. Nobody does. I want that to be part of his arsenal because yes. it's going to make him that much when better. When he needs it. Yes, when it's going to make him that right. much better. But the thing is, would you rather a quarterback do design runs 
where he he can avoid possibly getting a hit. He can av- go down. He can see the tackle coming or drop back with a horrible offensive line who literally he finished a year with 2.1 seconds, 2.17 seconds to throw the ball this year. Yeah. You can't do anything with that. Like I would rather have a design run where I know it's coming and I could go down before I get hit than actually get blindsided because I have a horrible freaking center and a horrible freaking tackle. Yeah, but then you're one dimensional. You're just a you're, exactly. you're just a running quarterback, did right? You're now it's okay. We'll just put eight in the box, and since we know he's not going to throw it, you know, you know what I mean. Or or you say put seven in the box. It, it you know it's, it's uh, there's a bunch of ways to skin a cat. But my point is is that if you're going to keep running this kid and running this kid, eventually. We saw it this year. It's just going to beat him up, and it's not fair to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So go yeah. either make it, make it, and go say, "All right, well, we're going to get some offensive liner and protect him because he can throw the football." Let's be honest. Kick the kick absolutely. I think Jay threw out the, mm-hmm. the stat earlier: forty Every... touchdowns and you know three interceptions his senior year or junior year. And, and, uh, the, junior. the kid can throw the football. And I mean, even during that six-game stretch where he was doing a lot of those design runs. He was still having the top, I think it was top two passer rating in the NFL among yeah. quarterbacks. So yeah. it was opening up pass. He wasn't passing it enough, obviously. We wanted him to pass it enough. But you also look at your receiving core and everything, too, because I know a lot of times they show the uh, the end zone view that shows the quarterback of what he's seeing. It was like, I see receivers just standing still. Like they run around, it doesn't get open. They just stand there and are waiting for Justin Fields to run, so they'll block. So, I, I mean, and that's where, I mean, I'll agree with JB on that when it does feel like the coaching and all that type stuff, it's not at the same, they're, they're not on the same level right now. But, I mean, after one year and a year that you knew you weren't going to do good in a year, you had zero talent pretty much on your team, I will judge him more next year. Hands down, I will. Well, I think every every analysis game. I've seen on Justin Fields by, you know, just a variety of experts and experts, is that one of those experts, Tannenbaum? Yeah. <laughs> really really but you know, like every analysis I've seen on him right and now. based on you know game film is that he projects as a good passer, not necessarily a great one, but a good one. But he becomes great because of what he can do with his legs. And that's better than a lot of you know guys who can run who also or you know, runners who happen to be able to throw. Like, like a Josh if he's able, you know, I want to yeah, say two honestly, names to everybody. Oh, RG3, Cam Newton. I do not want to see Justin become no, those two. I and don't Cam, and Cam him. Newton was an MVP and went to a Super Bowl. He got that one hit, and he's never been the same. But yeah, the RG, thing, could, and RG could never fix also, his Cam, knee. Cam, never, Cam. Thank you, because they ran him in the playoffs. Mike Shanahan played him in the playoffs with a busted knee, and he was yeah. done. Also, Cam Newton – he he always like I'm not being rude when I say this. He he threw like a girl always. Like he his mechanics were always very funky. And I feel like when he got hit on the shoulder, it kind of fucked with that, you know, to an extent. He was able to get it there for a long time, but then once you know he got that hit, it was like you know he couldn't do what he had relied on for so long. Whereas Absolutely. Fields, correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like he has better mechanics. This this is my assessment of Fields, and I said this before he came out when he was in college. This kid has an opportunity to change what we seen from a fucking quarterback. Because a quarterback? Huh? from a quarterback period. period. Okay. And the reason why I say this is because when you saw him in college, the kid completed 67 to 69% of his fucking passes. Mm-hmm. This ain't no dick and dump shit. He threw 41 fucking TDs, three yep. interceptions. And the key thing in okay. the championship game. And then the thing was, he Six. everybody sits up there talking about he running. The kid prefers the fucking pass yeah, first. You see when he, he runs. Prefers the pass first. Okay. So if you can, if they can somehow harness that and get that to come back out on the way he sits up there, he's more accurate like he was in college. And using his legs, that is going to be some shit that we have never seen in the NFL. Ever. A guy that's that damn that potent. Like you, how can you stop? Somebody like that. Yeah, that's where you got to get him an offensive line. 
Exactly. And my brother was yeah. five and zero oh against Michael Vick, so he did pretty good against. Him. All right, yeah. I'm glad you brought Nick that up pass because shoot, I was at that <laughs> game. I was he at that was game so where it was negative thirty two <laughs> degrees in the windchill, in the nosebleeds, facing the lake. And I remembered when Erlacher chased down Michael Vick and made that massive hit. I have better. Yeah. Do y'all remember? I think it was Michael Green just like destroying Jenkins, and Mike getting Green, the ball the popped up. Yeah, safety. Mike Green. Safety, Mike Green, like, yeah. Green. He just popped him, and the ball went up in the air. Vasher had the pick. It might have been the other way around, but it was just – I just remember it was just one of the – like Nathan in that Vasher, weather, just, another like, late-round pick, hit. second round. Yeah. Yeah. Was Tico, was Tico, my all, yeah. all-time Mike favorite, like all-time favorite highlight. Round. He was all-time the seventh. favorite highlight. He was, he was the oh, seventh. Yeah, they seven. called him Mr. You're, irrelevant. You're right, T-Nick. Well, how about yeah. Chris Harris? Yeah. Oh, Chris Ellis is a thump. We, hey, we, love, <laughs> and, and, and we, yeah, we, we love talking to Chris Harris, too. He, yeah, we he, had him on here a few times. He's a man. Him. I love he, Chris. He, he, tell him I said he's, hi. He's still, he will, still to this will. day, though, he still to this day won't tell us what he really thinks about the name the Washington Commanders because he's under contract <laughs> You guys got to get Zoom on. You guys got really Zoom on? No, man, we I've been, love Zoom. Trying, I, I've been we, talking we've been to Zoom every weekend at the Bay. Jerry? I'm going to see him next week. He won't come on. You, maybe you can put a bug in his ear. I'll, I'll tell him to do it with me. We'll do it sometime. Like yeah. maybe. That'd Tina. be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Zoom's the man, dude. He's awesome. Jerry Zuma yeah. was the one who taught me that you're allowed to run kicks back for touchdowns. I thought you just kind of had to like go down. I was like six, but like he was the one who let me know like, oh shit, you're allowed to score on these. That's pretty cool. Jerry Azuma made visors cool. Speaking he, of which, he walked so Devin has to run. What did Jerry Zuma win and what college did he play to? You guys got three seconds to answer. What what college he played to? Albany. And Christian. what did he win in college? Yeah, it was Albany Christian. He went to New Hampshire. New he Hampshire. Was, he went to New Hampshire. Did he go to New Hampshire? And he was, and he was the number was a number one running back. Johnny Knox Hampshire. went to Albany Christian. Oh, yeah, Johnny Knox. Well, if somebody shit. So I can't did yeah, I Small yeah. school. I knew it was Jerry a small Zuma, school. And Jerry Zuma won the Walter Payton Award. They got Jerry Zuma Day in New Hampshire still. Oh, I didn't wow. know that. I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, it was wow. big time. Really? Well, that's it. We'll get him on and Jerry yeah. Zuma Day then. Let's do it. Yeah, Jerry's <laughs> good. Hey, you know, was a longhorn. Speaking right? of which, Casey, your brother yes. change Easy. linebacker. Yeah. I'll get him on. I'll get him on with you guys if you want. Yo, yeah. Oh, yeah. We okay. want. We weren't even going there. He definitely <laughs> changed the whole. He changed the game. Last yeah. with <laughs> linebackering, he changed that totally. Yeah. Well, thanks. So he was. He was. You know what? He was blessed. We we're we're blessed people, and uh, he did. He he did some good things playing. Man, I always. You know, he played in the same era as Ray, and Ray's a beast. We all know that, and they just. You know, it was. I, you know, people always say he was great athletes and, and great football players and great basketball players. Uh, and I always said, what's what's the difference? And this is kind of an open argument for a lot of people. And, and you guys got buddies that we joke around with. Look, my brother can pick up a basketball and dunk it and shoot a three and, and do everything he want. He can pick up a golf club and do all that. And I said, you know, I remember like Keith Brookie and I said, hey, dude, you want to go play basketball one day? And Keith Brookie was a middle linebacker for the Falcons and he ended yeah, his I'm career with the Dallas Cowboys. Good friend of ours. I said, Keith, should, Keith couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat, man. You know what I mean? He, he couldn't shoot a basketball to save his life. I mean, we, I said, we did see Spice Adams shoot a basketball a few times. <laughs> oh, and so it I said, terrible. You know, there's a difference between being in the, you know, everybody knows about Dion and about Bo and, and, and MJ and everybody. Yeah. You know, those are people that can just basically pick up anything. I said, Brian puts a ping pong paddle in his hand and the kid, and he whoops your ass in ping pong. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> that and they had, they had a ping pong back in the day. At Can, you get on Can you get on hockey skates? Can you get on hockey skates and take me in hockey? I'm sure. For, imagine. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Stop. Well, you probably. Uh, imagine Urlacher. Like Speaking of which, Casey, tell like us about the Blackhawks. Like we all heard about like, these fucking ping pong matches that Brian used to have I at the crib at yeah. Hallis Hall. Tell us about True. some of these ping pong matches. Man, it was the best, dude. I'm telling you, we we played we played doubles, we played singles, but it was just it it was crazy. We had some some deep matches, man. Some strong matches. It was fun. Because yeah. when so I think of ping pong, I think about four. I'm about to say that means you was pretty badass too. Yeah, if you're a yeah. very good match with your brother. No, I, I listen. He. he <laughs> Out of ten times, no, don't be humble. No, none of that modesty shit over here, man. Come on, tell it. <laughs> he, 
he was good, man. He still is good. He's got a ping pong at his house still. Still his day. He still plays ping pong. I love mm-hmm. ping pong, man. Me too. I love ping pong. Well, tennis is don't just open ping your pong mouth around on him, the table. He'll say, well, let's play then. Tell, beer tell, pong, them, beer pong, tell him I'll accept his hockey match. <laughs> you imagine oh, you you'd probably whoop your ass <laughs> if he hits me i'm fucked yeah, so you, that's the first thing you do hit your ass i mean just imagine a, a black just say no bro. just say no i'll type this one in just say no shake, so shake the man's hand and say thank you <laughs> So, Casey, I know you spend a lot of time in Chicago. We always ask everybody that comes on this podcast these questions. Yes. Where is your favorite place to eat in the city? Gibson's. Oh, Gibson's. Gibson's. Okay. The steaks? Gibson's or Joe Stone Crab? Joe Joe's 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 good, Joe's they have good steaks, too. Yep. Yeah. You're, 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 you're a man or T-Bone man? I got Outback. I'm uh, uh, for for Joe Stone Crab. I like the bone and fillet. Okay, okay. And if okay. I'm at Gibson's, I like the New York strip slice. You get the I heard that Outback. Really yeah. Yeah. Right. You heard Frank. You heard Frank. I got Outback. <laughs> I got a Chili's nearby. Yeah, Gibson's uh, and Joe's are good ones, man. What about pizza? Pizza. I know you guys are laugh at this, one, man. I'm simple, but. Aurelio's has always been a good one for me. Aurelio's has been a good. I'm not a deep dish guy. Mm. I know you're gonna laugh at this. I like Canadian. I like Canadian bacon with pineapple, man. Oh really shit! Hey, I'm down with the pineapple. Oh, I like yeah, my guy. Thank you. I like pineapple. It's like it's like ketchup on hot dogs good. out here. You say <laughs> Wait, ketchup on your. Shit. I said that's like ketchup on hot dogs what? out here. Nah, man. Who puts I'm, ketchup on I see hot what dogs? you mean, but no. I do. Nobody's getting what I'm saying. I'm talking about the pizza with Canadian bacon and pineapple. <laughs> no, it's oh, an look, analogy. You, I'm getting you it. You totally messed me up because I'm like, I like Canadian bacon. Yeah, I like oh, Canadian Frank, bacon. I, love Canadian I, I get bacon. it. I just, yeah, I, I just disagree. I just, you know. Talk to me. Good. Talk to me, Tina. What you got, brother? So what about, what about fried chicken? There it comes. Fried chicken, man. Um, Raisin Cane's is like it's not really fried chicken because they do only do chicken strips, but Raisin Cane's is always a good one. Um, but mm. fried chicken for me, man, I'm old school. I always I had a KFC growing up, that was always good. So we have a KFC. I got KFC. We going to yank your ass so, up out of that but, north suburb and bring your I, I, ass I, I, to the I, city. So yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get hair. together and go visit this Harold's. Well, well, you, you've had Harold's before. They don't even have anything on the bone. You know what I mean? We, you ever we, had Harold's? We got to baptize you on the south side, Casey. We got to baptize you, man. Harold's. You got to have Harold's chicken. I still haven't had it, Casey. Let's go. Next time you're in town. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean next time he's, right, he's, he's in town? town. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are in town. It's your he's, brother who's out of town. He's in town, yeah. He's, I've had, he's, I've had, he's a suburban, too. Yeah, y'all so can go what? tonight. Oh, like, or probably not. Yeah. Yeah. I've had Popeyes. I've had them all. I mean, Popeyes have got... Popeyes have got good rice and beans. They do. Oh, hell yeah. Popeyes, yeah. You guys invite me. I'll go. I'm there. All all right. Right. There, it there it is. There it is. There it is. I, don't I, finally have, I can finally have my damn Harold's chicken that every single person we have on this podcast says Harold's chicken. Harold's chicken Harold's and Moore's chicken. beer. There it is. And I don't have Moore's beer. What else beer you got, Terrence? Uh, see. Do you want how Chicago are you? What's that, JB? We could. Hey. 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 Good. Do you <laughs> Gonna so watch this one. we haven't there's done that this, in a while. So, Casey, there's this game we play. It's called How Chicago Are You? Where we ask you a series of questions. And if you get more than half of them right, yeah, you from Chicago. You got you got your Chicago card. But if you answer less than half of them right. You ain't really from Chicago, but okay. you <laughs> you're right. You're right. All right. No, Fire away. We are going to do that. So. I'm about to say, T, you froze? Yeah, you that's the oldest connection he got. Man, get off Aldi's. They still have eggs for $3.99. Get off Aldi's. 
Yeah, but they they shouldn't have internet. <laughs> All the okay. So, first question, and this this question is a lob, a lob question, and it's kind of open ended because we know there are a lot more places you can name, but name three museums in Chicago, the three most popular museums. Well, um, art, field, okay. are you going to say the shed? Are you going to say the yeah. shed aquarium is a museum? Yeah, the shed aquarium. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah we were great. thinking uh, Museum of Science and Industry, but, you know, don't, don't, really, all of those are really popular, so. Yeah. All right, uh, you, you get the point, you get the point. And soon so, to be Soldier Field. Yeah, I was going to say that. Damn it, Frank. So number two. <laughs> number two. What, what famous Chicagoan starred in the movie Couples Retreat? Easy. Vince Vaughn. Ding, 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 ding. You got that one. You two for two. All right. <laughs> okay. You're doing all right. All right. Don't let that suburban part come out. <laughs> oh, no. I'm waiting. All right. So number three, and this this is this is kind of a lob too. What famous gangster and crime boss moved to Chicago from New York? Al Capone. Yep. You guys you got see, easy ones, man. Dude, I'm from yeah, New I was just like, I actually knew all these. <laughs> I'm from, from New Mexico. <laughs> I'm from New Mexico and I got all these right. We we get <laughs> hard. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Okay. Talents. Right. Talents. We about to get harder then. Okay. Yeah. Pause. Who? Who? Ah, pause. What? Yeah, pause. Pause. I'm too old to pause, man. Bro, start at beach. All right. Who is the lead singer of oh. the group Chicago? Oh. Well, there's about 18 of them. And the, most popular, the most popular one. I don't know his name. I can picture him, but yeah. All can right, you got can you sing one. his? Can you sing his solo song? Uh, was it, is it? You're my inspiration. Is that one of them? It is. Yeah, that's a Chicago song, right? Yeah. Then the other, the other song is Chicago. Yep. Do, 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 do. Yeah. See? No, yo, you don't know his name, but you know the oh, music. I, I know the music because I've seen him in concert twice. Okay. Can he, so, uh, can, he can he do like can he do like a shout out? Send it to one of us and then see if we can answer. And can I phone a friend? Read there, this? like that, like a phone a friend or you know tag somebody in. For a I question? think someone just gave you Peter the answer. Sotera. I told yep. you it was Peter Sotera. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you told him. <laughs> Thanks, Juanita. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm so three and a half out of four now. <laughs> so you got three and a half out of four. So let me give you let me give you this one. And this ain't a lie. After being stripped of his heavyweight title and suspended from boxing in 1967, this fighter found refuge in Chicago. That's easy. Don't Come on, Jimmy. I don't know who the fuck it is. I want to find you, Tracy. It ain't that easy. In 1967, I wasn't even born. <laughs> I know, right? Shit. Huh? Maybe. You got uh, it, man. You got it. JB really wants to answer it. No, I'm just JB? helping him out. Wait, hold on. You said he was he was banned. Yes. Did Did he he ever get banned? Oh, I know who it is. Boy, he nah. was suspended. He was suspended. Haystacks yes. Calhoun. I know Wait, who it is. What? It is who you're thinking what? of. Like that's Muhammad, Muhammad, Ali. Muhammad Ali. A lot of who? people didn't know it was Chicago. I didn't know that. Easy. Who the fuck is Three Stacks Calhoun? Whatever. Hey Stacks Calhoun. He's a boxer, I think. I My dad won a car once. Hey Casey, he's he's from California. He don't know what the fuck. I'm from Tennessee. About. I'm from Memphis. Tennessee. I live in California. <laughs> yeah. in that question, Not California. You live in California. Terrence, that question, it, it really makes you think because a lot of people did not know it was Chicago. I didn't just, know that. That's a good one. That's a good he used to have a chain of food little joints called Ollie's Trolleys. Remember that team? 
No, I haven't I even been to Harold's. I don't remember all these trolleys. Uh, I don't remember that, dog. <laughs> no, you got no, no, no. all these trolleys. What the fuck? All right, hey. so we got what four and a half out of five. Was that it? Three and a half out of five, really. Three and a half out of five. All right, so let's go to number. Right, you six. gotta say I'm... what amusement park did everyone go to after prom? Hmm. Amusement park, Six Flags. There you go. All right. It's up by me. It's up in Gurney Mills. It's eight minutes from my house. Right, right. So, so you <laughs> knew that. Did you did you go to did you go to uh, Six Flags after your prom? Nah, because I wasn't living here, and I definitely didn't go after uh, college or nothing. But I went. <laughs> I went. Oh, yeah, that's right. Did you ever go to Six Flags and and, and dress up like twins with your uh, wife? With my wife. I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would it be more of like a brotherly? I no, know. that's a Chicago <laughs> thing. We used to, we would. A lot of people would dress what up. What they call it? Twinning? Twinning? Yeah, yeah we didn't do that here in the suburbs. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. It's yeah, it's man. A long, I think that was a long I see, I see where Casey reached that. <laughs> that conclusion. was just some goofy <laughs> shit that, that we did. <laughs> I'm right. doing good. That we care. So what what's that? Four and a half out of four and a half out of, out of six, baby. Okay. That's, that's that's more than half. That's good. That's that's good so far. We'll All right. One more? Number seven. What is the tallest building in downtown Chicago? And you gotta say it by its true name, by the way. You don't try it by you just Frank, shut up, man. You just gave it's, it away. Just, you phoned you a friend. It's a serious. Yep. And that's that's not even the tallest. It's good, aka the Willis Tower now or something. Yeah, well, they're probably going to change it again. That's yeah, I like the Sears Tower. It's yeah, I like Sears Tower. Just like, just like it's always Comiskey Park. Yeah. So we they got know whatever the hell they changed it to. Guaranteed rate. Right. Preparation, <laughs> preparation H Arena or something. Uh, but we got one H more. Arena. We Talk got to me, one T-Dick. more. Basketball. Talk to me. What was the name of the former Chicago mayor? Who became Ooh, mayor several years after his dad? Richard Daly. Yeah. Easy. You ask him easy. a politic question. Yes. You <laughs> ask about a mayor to a mayor. That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I better know that one. I just saw him. Well, you better know that one. So he got better <laughs> than half. So he got his he got his Chicago. Wow, mouth, how'd I do? He got his Chicago card. He, he was throwing them fucking alley oops up there. He's like, God damn it, go get it. You gotta put the go hand in there. I, <laughs> I can give you a bonus one though. I'm ready. All right. So what does he get for the bonus? A bucket of Harold's chicken? Yeah. We already taken care of that, man. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. I'm okay. Keeler, Costner, Cat Bell, Kilpatrick. And Kilborn all make up an area known as what on the west side of Chicago? Kilborn, cost, cost. Say it again. We got five of them. Yeah. Kilborn, Costner, Kedville, Kilpatrick, and Kilborn. I'd be all very make surprised up what if he area. Is this. this is a tough wow. one. I don't know this one, so I'm suburban. That's why it's a bonus, baby. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if you get this one. Well, help me out, foul mouth. What do they all have in common? What they all got in common? Our friend already said it in the chat. Yeah, but don't put that post. I going to pull it up. They all started with a K, right? That's true. And we live huh. in Shy Town. There we go. Pink, was it K Town? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I went to help. We'll take it. Even there with it the is. charades I won. K Town. Right. <laughs> Even with the charades I won. This is great. <laughs> so Frank is going to get you a case of Moore's beer. Hold up your Moore's, JB. Did you say Frank's going to get it? I don't have Moore's. So I'm giving you an opportunity to go get some. Moore's beer. It's it's a it's a really good beer, man. It's 
really smooth. They got like four different four different kinds, and that was uh, an IPA or something, JB. They do have a they have a brown ale, an IPA, a session, a porter, and a not pilsner, um, a sandy a lager, a lager. It's a it's the green one. So they have Chicago. Uh, yes, yes, okay. Chicago based, absolutely. Yep. And when I tell you, man, this this the this is it. I won't I won't drink any other beer. I even you asked my it. Benny's out here to order it for me. They said it's are you, not on. Are you a beer market. drinker? Me? Yeah. When I'm in the middle of the ocean fishing, yes. <laughs> in the middle. Of the ocean. <laughs> How old are you? Are you in the middle Good of the ocean? <laughs> middle of the ocean, marlin or mackerel? That it would be grouper, yellowtail grouper. snapper, cobia, amberjack, stuff like that. Although he did catch a nice selfish last week, so you went to the Atlantic Gulf side. Gulf side, okay, down. Side. Okay, all the Gulf side, right on Marco Island, JB. Nice, 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 nice. Hey, man, ain't nothing like no good fishing. That's some good eating. That's the we best our, time when you're in the middle of the we got our good old friend Amber commenting on there for you too. That's uh, Paul's uh, wife. I'm guessing Paul didn't make it on, but long oh, snapper. Long snapper. Okay. That so that's Paul. And remember Paul Edinger? That's his wife. I think I know her. Yeah. Hey Amber. Hey Amber. How you doing? What up, Amber? Thank so, you. So, Mayor, before we let you go, how often are you in the middle of the ocean fish? I'd be scared shitless. I try to go like once a quarter. Honestly, man. Um, it, it's, that's like my release valve. It's, uh, you know, you're in the middle of the ocean. You, you honestly get no cell phones. So I might as well be at my house. I don't get no Wi-Fi. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you get no cell phone, man. You, you know, nobody can bother you. You got music. You got the, the people you want to be with. The sun's always shining for the most part. So it's just peaceful, man. Yeah. Being out there and not seeing anybody, you know, and you're on a boat with six, eight people and, it's it just is. chilling, man. It's just a good feeling, and it's it's a it's good fun. time. You leave it. Yeah, it's a good time. You're drinking and eating and and fishing and listening to music, and you're just with the people that you want to be with, and telling stories and laughing, and you get hot, jump in. I never jump in, but some of the guys do. I never do, but <laughs> can, no can you swim? I can swim, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I ain't trying to swim when I'm a hundred miles out in the middle of the ocean. No, <laughs> <laughs> my head's staying. That like that's a long boat. way down. <laughs> yeah, that's. But that's I ain't swimming. That's the down. <laughs> And you see sharks around the boat and barracudas. I'm not all. I'm not trying to jump in with them. Oh shit! No, oh, hell. Like I always, tell, like tell my Amber, old man always said. Amber, to tell Paul, I said hi. Whoever's chatting with them. Amber, can you tell? I Paul think Paul's on Amber's right now. What up? She I said am. he's here. Yep. <laughs> Sounds like Man, it. Man, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to talk to us for two hours. So we're not yeah. going to take up we're not going to take up hey, no more of your time, time Mayor. Me know, I appreciate it. You, okay. you guys got my Absolutely. email. You stay in touch with me. I'm not I, I'm I'm always for pretty sure. good about Absolutely. following up with emails and you know if you guys want my phone number by any means, but if you guys want to get Brian on or some other people in the yep. future, Terrence, you know how to track me down, brother. Yeah. I apologize. It took so yeah, long. I'm I appreciate you, you guys having me. Yeah. I'm hey, we're not kidding tomorrow. about this Harold's Thanks chicken. Lot, Let's all get together with some Harold's chicken. Yep. All right. I'm, I'm waiting on the invite. All right. All right. All right. Here. Now we just got to wait on where we're going. I can drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put it together. Right, be good, man. Got have a good night. Right, man. Man. Take, take, take care. care. Thanks, guys. Yeah, take care. Yep. Oh, Great guy, awesome. a lot, lot of fun, a lot of fun, man. Lot funny fun. as hell, too. Yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he a funny dude, oh, man. Yeah. But oh, he yeah. knew his Chicago shit, that's for yeah. sure. He did. Yeah, he Speaking did. of Chicago shit, easy, you are not. You are I'm not. not huh? At least I'm from Illinois. <laughs> fair point, fair point. <laughs> hey. No, but- hey, man, ever, ever, everyone... Is born at some point. Everyone's There's got nothing wrong with knowing right. at some point from a different state. Right, boy. Yeah, right. This is I'm the, the I'm the ambassador. Podcast. But he loves Chicago. Chicago. I, I I would Chicago challenge Chicago any of you except it. probably JB to a Chicago sports trivia competition. Well, okay, maybe not if it's the Blackhawks, but other stuff for sure. I, I got Are you. Sure? I'm just saying. 
And I, sure. I would do it. Yeah, sure. I would do it too. I'm not saying I would win, but yeah. I'd challenge yeah. y'all. Sure. Mr. Uh, Mr. Blackhawks or, or hockey isn't a real sport. Okay, yeah, but you realize that was ball. all a setup, right? That because whole it doesn't have a ball. Clearly, so, that it was, because guess what we can do in the I future? Know it was a setup. No, but that, I was just that, having that, fun was, with it. No, it was fun. It was a good time. Hey, I, I like. So Anthony gave us a question. He said, uh, "What amusement park was located on 95th and Stony back then?" What amusement park was over there? God, it was over there. Oh, by where the damn uh, Buddy Bear get, car wash. Oh, wasn't was there, that no. called like it was called Fun Something? Fun, fun Time or something? Fun, fun Town yeah. or Fun Time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my dad like would know if he's still watching. I'm gonna ask him. Yep, it was like fun time. Or fun Am I right time. on that, Anthony? Is it like fun town or something like that, or fun hey. time? Amber no said they ready for some heroes too. We gotta get together, go. Hey, we we can do. Hey, we do yes. can we do a show at Harold's? Fuck. Let's, Shit, let's yeah, put we it do somebody at home. Huh? Ooh, I, like, <laughs> like, yo, I don't know if we want to do a show at Harold's. <laughs> <laughs> Why? We'll no, we don't, because we'll be oh, looking over our shoulder the whole time. Wait, it, de- oh, wait, so no, no, no. Place, it depends man. on the Herald. Yes, it depends on which you one. You got to go to the traditional Herald. Man. Well, if we go to the one on Ace and Wabash, we probably good. Anthony said you're correct. Fun time. Yeah, fun time. I'm about to say, yeah. Yeah, we can go to the one on, uh, actually, there's a, a Herald's Ice Bar on Michigan. We can actually go to that. Oh, you said right. You had told us about that before. It's like a yeah. like a lounge, right? Yeah, yeah. We can go to that. They have a full bar too. The, not that I'm gonna drink anything, and yeah, I know what I'm is this stuff you want, man. With a, a bunch of alcoholics. Um, I, I, I'm not drinking anymore. To to answer Anthony's question, <laughs> is it dispenses Kitty Kingdom? Is that bring about that one? Did we already answer that? Answer that? I think oh, I, was, I wasn't sure if we. I, I wasn't sure if we Anthony, 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 Paul Edinger yeah. just messaged me and said, "Um, yeah, um, he's down for Harold's too because he's getting sick and tired of everyone talking about Harold." <laughs> <laughs> hey, let let's set that up sooner than later. All right, it's I done. Know. T, let's see if we can get a reservation down there. We'll make it happen. Hopefully, we can get another one of these 40, 43 degree days. No, yeah. we could do it, but if it's not a sponsor, outside, uh, first of all, we don't need no 40 degree days. We have all, well, majority of us have been born in Chicago. We know what to expect. Hey, we know what, what time we it need is. And what we I really don't need, we want to go days. out in the cold. Shit. Motherfucker, we've been going out in the cold every goddamn day. It don't mean shit. No, what? We, because we have to. Fact, you want to see how Chicago you are? How many motherfuckers out here are going to win out in fucking 10 degrees or lower to go club in fucking Chicago? A club? No. Yeah. No, well, well, not club. your ass, JB. You, no, you better go out club. the damn house anyway, you damn no. hermit. It sounds <laughs> like a great time. Not in less than 10 degrees. Ah, right, you bullshit. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, Chris, when your I ass was young, you was out there. Shit, your lad ass up. To go stand in line in less than 10 degrees? What the hell? No. I said yeah, yeah. my ass would. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Y'all I mean, would have saw you would have saw, saw, not... saw some of them fine motherfuckers that was in line shit. Your ass would have went too. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chris, you would have been like days? a magnet, dude. You would have just been uh, twenty dollars to get in, twenty dollar coat check. Man. <laughs> shit. So, Especially when you had no money. So fellas. Yes. What? What are the Bears? What do you think the Bears are thinking right now? That we 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 hold the cards. We hold the, the cards. Yes, we got the number one pick. Montgomery Montgomery's contract is about to be up. What's going through their minds right now? That we got Monte in their face. You got Saquon <laughs> in the in their face or in the ear rather. What are they thinking? There's a, lot, there's a lot going on that oh, they're man. thinking right yeah, now. There's a lot. The, the Bears the are job. in a great position. Yeah, they're in I a think, phenomenal position because, like how you said, man, they hold the I card. They're in an unfamiliar position. I think. Oh, 100%. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they say 75 years, 76 the years? Last, first time that's the last time they've years. had a first overall pick. I don't know if that's really something to be proud of, but it gives Bears fans excitement. Shit. I think that's going to be interesting bad. what they do with it. 
Because they I have think to that right now. I think right now they know they're kind of playing the waiting game to see what Washington does with Deron Payne to see, you know, just what a lot of these teams do with these players who are going to need contracts. Um, I think that's pretty much where they're at. Like they're just kind of, they know they're in a state of limbo. They just are waiting it out. Um, I don't know if the phone's ringing off the hook just yet either. Oh, no, that's too fucking early. No, they're milking. Well, they're, we're yeah, it's literally crazy. like one day removed from like Black Monday. So like, They've got until April 26th. I mean, I'm I'm sure people have called and they've probably just said, yeah, I'll trade you in my neck. Or um, polls is probably like, oh, you want to make a deal now? Trade me your next five first. Pay, trade me your whole draft. But also is something that trade like JB up, just New Orleans said. Saints with Ricky Williams. <laughs> it's, it's also like what JB said. You know, we one day removed from Black Monday. So – we don't know what other coaches are going to be can and who's going to be hired. So then that comes into play because depending on the draft or depending on what direction the new yeah. coach may want to go, there you, go. you still got other things in play. Or mm-hmm. shit, matter of fact, who may be fired as a GM or a president of football operations. Or, or who or may coach. become a new GM. Yeah, a new uh, GM. Ian Cunningham. Yeah. Tennessee. Ian Cunningham. Tim- yeah. Oh, y'all didn't read that? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you one I'm team. Have to, I'm have to research. He's that. rumored to be the head candidate for the Tennessee Titans uh, vacant GM. Position. I did hear that. Yeah. Ooh. And that. and that you're hey, talking ooh, about our yeah. assistant, right? Yeah. yeah. And that means and that's draft compensation for us. Absolutely. Third round. Third round. I think we get we get a third round because he took a GM position. Damn. So yeah, round, the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinals are in on that too. Pick. That's just another pick. So when you're under contract with the team and upper management goes to another team, you get compensation for that? Well, not just that coaching too, because remember, you can't move laterally. You have to go up. So oh, technically, okay. he's an assistant GM currently. The Tennessee Titans are, in, are according him to be a full GM. And if I'm him, I take that job. Said so, no, he has to be in office for two years. Mm. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, so then, uh, then uh, that's that's no, tough. So we won't get it. That is Jesse. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Time out. So he's only been in the position one year because it's the first time the Bears have ever had an assistant GM. But don't we get compensation for Ryan Poles? I want to talk about what Anthony's talking about too, but um, I di- I didn't hear this actually. So uh, well, wait, wait did, did you just answer this question? question? Yeah, well. Was that an- who was that that just answered it? Because what do you guys? Uh, well, no, it was Jesse who answered it. Jesse, Jesse Contreras. Yeah. Okay, so no, he hasn't been in office for two years. Clearly, so I guess we don't get compensation for him. But I thought we did get compensation for hiring a minority GM. Do we not? I, I believe we do. If, even if it's a compensatory pick, I, I want it. Well, I mean, I just I sure as hell hope the Texans don't get. Com, com, a compensatory pick for hiring Lovey just to fire him. Well, remember they him have Doug. Nick. No, that's a Rooney Rule thing where they have to interview blah 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 blah. But they have right. Nick. He looked like Lurks from the Adams family. Nick Carcelius, or how do you say his name? Is their GM like they just hired him like two years ago? Are we talking about Tennessee? The tight. Oh, I'm the, sorry, the Texans. Texans. Here, let me find it real quick. So yeah, so they're probably. Not the gold standard. Stereo. On, him. They're not the gold standard on hiring or firing anybody. Terrio. That's his last name. Casario. Cas- oh, Nick, Nick Casario. Okay. okay. He's their GM. And remember, so it- they fired Bill Bradley four games in. They fired Cornell at the end of 21. They fired um, David Cully at the end of 22. They fired Lovey at the end of 23. So, so it's the, four it's the, coaches in the last the three. beginning of twenty three. Beginning of twenty three. Sorry, I don't four think the coaches. Texans are going to see a Super Bowl. So, so it soon. says this right here. It said teams can also receive compensatory picks if a minority coach or executive is hired to to the same or better role by a different club as a result of the league's effort to increase diversity in hiring coaches and front off front office executives. So that doesn't say does it state the length of time. Doesn't state the length of time. So then, reading what you just read, there is some hope that we would get a compensatory pick for Ian Cunningham, mm-hmm. which is cool with me because it's a third round pick. I right, take right. It. I, I, I take I, it. 
I'm with it. I'll take I'm it. I'm with it. So let's address this. I would love I didn't to. Hear, like, is this the Kevin Warren thing? Because I heard he was the top candidate. I didn't hear somebody actually hired him yet, though. I, I, what? I didn't hear he got hired, but it's almost like the one of the worst kept secrets type deals. Mm. And Ted Phillips has officially stepped down. Yeah. So we know that the vacancy is is there, right? Okay. Hold on. One more, one more thing. One more thing right. before y'all go. So what Jesse is saying, it says in November 2020, team owners approved a proposal rewarding teams who develop minority talent that went to or or went on to become GMs or head coaches across the league. If a team lost a minority executive or a coach to another team, that team will receive a third round compensatory uh compensatory. Compensatory. You know, yeah, compensatory pick for two years. Two. So we so lose. We, so he's so we lose Ian in Cunningham and he becomes a GM. We, we get two years worth of around. Him. Yeah. Well, that's fine. So we get one this year and we get one next year. Ian, take the job. That's spicy. <laughs> take the yeah. job. Yeah. Please like, take the job. Today, take the job. <laughs> Just if you're listening right now, sign the damn paper. So yep. Arizona or Arizona, Arizona, Arizona and Tennessee, Tennessee are both interested. Job. The Titan, the Titans not gonna do it. They're not that far off. Yeah. So we are going to a Hawks game on a Saturday. We are going to a Hawks game. Well, with the exception of of JB and Easy. Damn, that's Mike sweet. Williams. What? That is Mike dope. That, that's that that, Mike, that goes hard. Not a good one. <laughs> Even though he got that shit from he got that shit from from Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, it did, dude. Have, it might have cooties. It, no, I he's saying it. they got some good twice. stuff on there. He <laughs> did smell like cigarettes, but I washed it, it twice. Cooties. Don't worry about so, it, Jesse. It's okay, shit. I, I was mispronouncing uh, company. I can't even say the fucking word. Compensatory. 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 I was about to say compensatory, but compensation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who fucking cares? Y'all yeah. know the fuck I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> I'm about to say, right, don't right. go to the commissary. No. Yeah. So we going to the uh, we are going to the hockey game on Saturday. Thanks, man. I'm waving at so, my fiance. So Frank felt, and I felt that it was appropriate mm -hmm. to have a little bit of hawk talk. Yeah. Did they lose uh, again? I actually made a nice little video too. Oh shit! Let, let, it's, let's it's a quick that. fifty second video, but we'll talk about it before. Hey, shit, play. quick about fifty seconds. They they did win their <laughs> they did win their last game, Falmo. They did win their last game. Um, but Blackhawk talk, and it's never something you want to hear. I, it's not a serious injury, but it's going to keep him out for a little while. Patrick Kane got hurt. Um, but Double when he lower. It was yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a lower body. You know, that's the only thing hockey gives you lower upper body. Um, but they called off their young 19 year old from I love how it, on my face too. <laughs> <laughs> but they called up the young 19 year old who is their young star that they have down in Rockford that is just killing Rockford. He had his first game back up today, or not yet today, yesterday. And he scored his first shift, his first shot of sick goal between the legs that you don't see that often. And he did pull up three points, a goal and two assists, and he did assist on the game winner in overtime too, which was nice. But What's here's a quick look. What? His name is Lucas Reichel. He was their first round pick from 2021. They drafted, him. Rockford they drafted Ice him. Hogs. Rockford Ice Hogs is there. They play the Chicago Wolves. They do play the Chicago Wolves. They actually played the Chicago Wolves in the playoffs last year, too, but unfortunately the Wolves did beat them in the playoffs. It doesn't and make the sense that the Wolves the are the affiliate of the Blues. That just doesn't work for No, me, the Wolves are affiliate. I thought they were the Blues, no? No, I think they're the Winnipeg Jets. Oh. Unless that – actually – you know what? I think that did change. Last year they went somewhere else, so I, I don't think it's. The oh, they're the Hurricanes. They're the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes now, yeah. The they Canes. were the Winnipeg Jets a few years ago, and then no, um, who was the Hurricanes? Carolina. Carolina. So um yeah, I mean Chicago Wolves won the entire thing last year. The only championship we had other than the Chicago Blitz 
the sky. Last year. And the, bl- the blitz. Oh, the and sky. The, the sky lost last year. Damn, that was two years ago. Sky yeah, choked years last ago. year. Yeah, that was two years ago. Um, but here's a nice little highlight of his goal. Kadri sat on the puck, and here's Lucas Reichel in his third game of the season with the big league club. And Seth Jones down low. Viva score! And an NHL first for Lucas Reichel. That's what happens when you throw pucks at the net. It's going to count for Lucas Reichel. 14th career game, gets his first goal, gets a little redirect. And then he gets his own rebound. Oh, battles the big six foot six, 250 pound Nikita Zadorov to find this one into the back of the net. That goes hard. Yeah. Little guy, too, man. He's only 19. I think he just turned 20 last month, too. So, mm-hmm. what do you got, Jim? Those jerseys are. They just That's said six six two six six two. No, that was that was who he played up against as the, the defenseman. That he around. No, that was the door off the defenseman that he went. I don't around. give a fuck. The motherfucker six, he, six He was two, no. Eight. He was actually oh, on the Blackhawks states. last year. He was on the Blackhawks last year. Damn that! The Bears need him as an edge rusher. <laughs> well, this, <laughs> get this too. He's six six off of skates. On skates, he's six nine. Hey man, so he's that much bigger on hockey skates too. Hey look, man, somebody okay. put his big ass in some pads, uh, man. They, he's in pads right now. The wrong pads. I know, and now I love it. Now we're not even talking about the Blackhawk player. <laughs> that was the oh, other that's, team. That's my bad. Yeah. My, but no, it's all good. But he was on the Blackhawks for the last few years, and I didn't want him to get rid of him. And it's because of his size that he just freaking destroyed people. Wait, they didn't want like Dustin Bufflin thing because he was like huge. No, Dustin Bufflin. Well, that, was that was Duncan. Okay, Duncan. Duncan Keith. No, no, Duncan Dustin Keith. Bufflin was huge. Duncan. There was Bufflin. I about to yeah, say, one was of them was like, huge, huge. But Dustin Bufflin only left because he got a big deal, and unfortunately our general manager screwed up contract negotiations with the team where he wasn't able – he missed the deadline of the contracts by I think it was like three minutes. And because of this, he get, he got docked over $17 million in salary cap. Why do I feel like the Bears not too long ago did some dumb stuff like that with the Ravens? It could have been. Yeah, it could have been. Were they that's, that's, that's why I have, when they when they won it in I think you're thinking of I think you're thinking of the Ravens with Elvis Doomerville. I remember that, yeah. Well, yeah, Elvis, Elvis Doomerville. It was, it was a fax machine. From the Broncos, right? That was yep. the first jersey, the first Hawks jersey I ever owned. But I knew nothing about hockey, but I liked the jersey. <laughs> I liked the jersey. It's still yeah, it's that, still that throwback to this day goes the so one. hard. <laughs> You can so it in a hockey like, a week later. You a hockey a sweater. Grass. Yeah, they call it sweaters. Sweater. I'm sorry. Yeah, they call them sweaters. sweaters. Then, really like a week later, after I got it, he went to the Atlanta Thrashers, right? The the Bufflin, yeah. Yeah. So and then he he then Atlanta Thrashers went away and they moved to Winnipeg and then he was a Winnipeg Jets and he had to retire mm-hmm. because he got in he got a big deal. And then he just did a lot of dumb shit Mm. and got in so much trouble. And pretty much he kept getting suspended by the NHL and everything because of all the trouble. He must have had, and in Winnipeg too, I think it was like 11 boating under the influence. Boating? Boating under the influence. I was like, you're in Winnipeg, dude. On the water. Boating under the influence. He was always drinking and boating. Well, Well, that's how Jose Fernandez died. Must be yeah. I remember Damn, that. It was. that was I forgot. sad, man. That was sad. I forgot about that. Yeah. That was sad. What are y'all but, um, Yeah, excited to get some Blackhawk talk in here, too, because now with us going to a game, oh, we, know, know, we, yeah, we are going to uh, meet up with our buddy Chris Chelios. Hey. Chelios. That should be a lot meeting of fun. up with him, sitting with him, watching the game on Saturday versus – the newer expansion team, the Seattle Krakens. Hey, I never Krakens. have a problem sitting Krakens. with anybody. Where that damn octopus is? They don't have an S on it, do they? It, it's the it's the Krakens, you know, from Greek Krakens, yeah. The Krak- Krakens, yeah. Krakens. Yeah. Unleash the Krakens. Whatever that damn octopus that, is. Yes. That. I never have a problem okay. with sitting with anybody by the name of Chris. By the way, so 
Yeah. 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 And hockey, hey, we, hockey we players do have some foul mouths. So we can't okay. forget uh big ups to big Steiny, John Steinmiller. He's the senior uh representative for the Blackhawks who invited oh, us to sure. the to the game yes, sir. on Saturday and gave us six tickets. So six of us will be going. So big ups to you, Big Steiny, for uh for checking us out and giving us those tickets, man. Yes, sir. And uh okay, let's and officially I'll be coaching get it. all you guys up for the game. I'm coaching huh? all you guys up for the game. Yeah, because I don't know shit. I don't know shit. Fuck but you're gonna be too excited, right? I yeah, I am <laughs> so excited. I remember I remember having to take my wife for the first time. It was so much fun teaching her the damn game. I've been to Johnny's Ice House. <laughs> all the practices. Hell, I took my girl to her first Bulls game. Shit, I can't stop getting her to go to the goddamn game. That nah, shit. <laughs> Why my ass broke over here. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, those games are expensive, well, man. After I saw, we're, after we're, I saw that beautiful mind, ring you put on her finger. <laughs> after I saw that beautiful stone you put on her finger, that might be a reason. Hey, I got to show you how to do the Seat Geeks yeah. thing, man. I, 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 I'm going to wrap with you. <laughs> yeah. I took her ass to a Bears game, too. Now I'm fucked. Oh, shit. She yeah, was I, out there setting the cold? Sports and video games was the only damn thing that I had to myself. Now that shit's gone. Next thing you know, she's going to be playing Call of Duty with me and shit. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would tell you guys the first time I ever took my wife to a Hawks game because she would probably want me to tell you guys, but it's an embarrassment on my part on what happened. What you do, spill beer? I accidentally gave her a Tylenol PM and did not know it was a PM. She you fell asleep. Drug. So you she drugged fell her. asleep at the second period. She, she was so you, out so cold snoring. You drugged her. Did, yeah, did, I mean, that's uh, how she says it. Yeah, first of all, you did not accidentally do that shit. All right. I did actually. We all know. I actually told my mom and told her to check her shit. You did not accidentally do that. Who said Bill Cosby? Oh, man. Who said that? I think somebody just said that. Get y'all ass. Go ahead, Frank. We're going to ignore that. We're going to ignore that Bill Cosby shit. <laughs> so then, you said it again. Drug that ass so she, so she ain't, so you ain't got to answer no damn questions and shit. I know that fucking move. I didn't think about that. That's not yeah, right. exactly. That's why I asked for <laughs> sleep. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good night. Is, is that a home run? Hey, oh, baby, that looks so cool. Just... Let's officially get into some shout outs so I can get out of here. Yeah, because we know you look fat ass hungry. <laughs> why, why I got to be fat, man? And hey, we all fat on this That's motherfucker. That, I can, I got to be I'm fat, over here dying in that shit. <laughs> I need, I need I damn near wearing a bra shit. I gotta, I gotta lose this weight, man. I <laughs> All right, so medium. I got so, one. How about oh, easy? Cra- easy can start. Yeah, easy. You can get off. podcast again. You the what? Rookie. Oh, so I, I'm starting it as the rookie. Shout yeah. outs. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, well, uh, I'm gonna shout out my dad because he's uh, he tuned in today, which is cool. So shout out to my dad. Absolutely. Um, he's the Chicago oh, guy, man. so that that's cool. Uh, gave me much of my Chicago knowledge. Um, shout out to Demar Hamlin, of course. You know, uh, for you know. Just being like an inspiration to so many people, and you know, by the way, that Bills game, the way that Bills game started was awesome. Oh really special moment there, um, and perhaps you know, most of all, from the perspective of a fan, shout out to the Detroit Lions for going at to Lambeau Field and beating oh, the shit. shit out of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, just absolutely smoking them. Like, or I guess they didn't smoke them, but they beat them on their home field and sent home the Lambeau Field faithful. Very, very sad and miserable. And that always makes me very happy to see Packers fans and Packers players very sad. So shout out to the Lions for doing that. You know, I know y'all are our rival, but the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So props to Jared Goff and company. I rooted and, for Detroit in that game. Oh, oh big time. Oh, big oh, time. Oh, and as always, fuck Green Bay. And uh, shout out to the NFL playoffs. We got a really exciting slate ahead of us. Uh, should be a lot of fun to watch. Um, probably going to root for the AFC for the most part. But uh, yeah, should be should be great. Should be great. Um, yeah. And I'll toss it to uh, I'll toss it to JB. 
Oh, oh, I get to go. Are, are we doing this it that way? Is that how we is do this it? This is how we're gonna do it now. We're gonna toss him along. I don't know because normally T does it. No, he you know, just we gotta, we gotta get it host back to the host. I liked it. I liked oh, thank it. you. Oh my God, thanks, T Nick. I appreciate it. I did something good. Hey, look, I will receive. I will receive the punt, and I will not muff or fumble. It. Thanks, thank Bayless. You. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all are dirty. Oh, absolutely. So, again, hey. To my brothers, love Tuesday nights with all of you all. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Like, I, when I'm getting antsy, like, 752, 745, I'm not done with working. Like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Love being here with y'all. Hey, man. Casey Erlacher, was he not the shit? Like, oh, he was awesome. He was, awesome. Awesome. He he was awesome. knowledgeable. Knowledgeable and funny. Awesome. Not overly political. Funny as hell. Like, Hey, can't wait to actually chop it up with that brother in real life. Um, shout out to Amber and Paul Edinger who jumped in. And everybody else in the chat, like I said, lit as usual. We saw some new faces today. I, I won't take too much time with that because I know some of you guys are going to jump in and, and enter that chat. It's duty. Um, here we y'all are going to get mad at me. Shout out to Rokal Smith for getting that $20 million a year. Why would Agreed. we get mad at you for that? Well, he will. Why? Um, why would anybody get me? good for him, dude? I, I'm, I'm just saying I had to shout it out good. because yeah. I'm, I'm happy proud. He got paid. I'm, I'm proud. happy I'm it wasn't him. here. He bucked the system with not having an agent. People doubted him. He bet on himself. It actually worked in his favor. Five years, hundred million dollar contract. Wish you were here. You're not. Wish you well. Roquan. At least he's in the AFC, right? He's in the AFC. Yeah. Um, right. Anybody else that I'm missing, I'm going to blank right now because, like I said, I'm just really, really excited for the show that we just did. Like, this was an awesome hanging out show. Um, everybody else, thank you for tuning in if you didn't say anything, and I'll uh, shoot it too far. All right. Um, um, again, Casey, or like, yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly, JB. Somebody who's as knowledgeable as he is, as funny as he is, like he he fit he fit it what he fit well in here like he looked like he had fun too we had fun we always love seeing that type stuff um and to shout out with what easy was saying with the lions absolutely um never do i usually want to say shout out to the lions cuz i hate them too but when it comes down to a situation like that seeing aaron rodgers holding that freaking other wide receiver clown like almost crying in the locker room on their way back oh, was, that was hilarious i laughed i don't care it was I, hilarious. I, I freaking it was, it was delightful i don't oh, oh, love it. The it was so it. Damn it. i loved don't it take my stuff victor oh, shout out you. the love you yeah. that was next oh shit list. victor thank you I forgot. Oh, hey, and hey, frank before you, you get the love you shout out to sherry for the detroit energy Oh, hey, hey, I agree with that one, too. Shout out, Sherry, and that one. Thank you. Shout out, Lovey Smith. Yes, thank you. Man, just like I said it earlier, just like like we didn't think we would love Lovey Smith anymore in Chicago, and then he goes and does something like that to solidify the number one pick, and I will give a shout out, early shout out to Ryan Poles because I have faith. It's all you can have in this. I mean, we're Bears fans. You could all only have faith that he is going to make the right decisions and give us a shitload of draft capital with this number one pick and still coming up, out with some elite-type draft picks. That's that's what we're all hoping right now. Um, chat, Paul, Amber, loved seeing you guys on here. Um, everyone else, uh, JB's mom, podcast mom, thank you for being on there. I don't even think JB shouted out your mom, did you? But you know who's such a great guy out out on that one. <laughs> I'm on that one. <laughs> um, everyone else on the chat, again, chat was lit. Had a great talks all throughout the entire show. So all I got, look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday for the Hawks game. Shout out to or shut, no, I'm sorry, throwing the fishing rail to foul mouth now. Middle of the ocean. See what you got, foul. Okay. So. Stephen A. Smith style. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I would like to give a shout out to the chat. First of all, the chat was lit tonight. <laughs> Thank you all for coming on and enjoying this wonderful show with us. We really do appreciate it. Um, 
Shout out to JB's mom. Shout out to Amber, Victor, Juanita, Anthony, uh, Jesse. And if I forgot you, shout out to you because we do love you. Thank you for enjoying. And remember, everyone, to like and subscribe to the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors, you, In The Zone, Moore's Beer, and Under Armour. I'd like to give a shout out to our special guest, Casey Erlacher. It was fun, you know what I'm saying? Very knowledgeable, had a great time with him, and he's very funny as well. And he's a politician. Who knew politicians could be funny? Right? <laughs> right? Spot on, bro. Spot on. Right. right. Exactly. I want to give a shout out to you. Four brothers, well, five brothers, I'm sorry. Well, four, I yes, I'm sorry. I'm counting my damn self. Uh, T. Nick, JB, Frank the Tank, and Easy Does It. Shout out to you all. Also want to give a shout out once again to my baby girl, my oldest girl, my oldest daughter, Taylor. Give a shout out to her. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, baby girl. It's you know, she all right it's in my book and she a goddamn Capricorn, just like her Will, dad. Will Smith, bad boys too, baby. Yeah. Going out on that first date, that'd be you. Yeah, oh, right. right. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to say, what you say? I can see it. I can see it. Is that you and JB or is that you and Terrence that are doing that with it? I'm definitely going to be like, look like you thought it. I thought it was dead right. I can yeah. see it. I can totally see that. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Chitty, chitty, bang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Move. Get out of the way. Okay. I want to also give a shout out to the kitties who asked it should be sleep. That including my, well, I don't know. My daughter might still be up. She in high school. But shout out to the kitties who should be sleep. If not, the fucking phones is mine. I want to give a shout out to my newly fiance. Who still is fucking sleeping with that fucking goddamn engagement ring I gave? Ooh, that and I told her I do not want to get scratched with a fucking <laughs> diamond. Okay, it's just not fun. I believe I'm a human. It's that big? She can we got a bleeder. Yeah. Yeah. You know that picture, man. Off, right? Yeah. <laughs> I told her to take the motherfucker off and put it somewhere, goddamn it shit. I don't want to get fucking cut. It, you know, it, it doesn't feel good feeling blood trickle down your fucking back or some shit like that. Oh, I don't know wow. what the fuck people think that shit feels good. It does. Yikes. Yeah. Who thinks that that's a, that's a fetish. I, I don't know. Well, you know, some people got crazy ass fetishes like yeah, vampires yeah. and shit, you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> whatever floats your go. Outside of that, I'm done. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, toss this double play up to T-Nick. Everybody get ready. Get those fucking violins playing, baby. Let's get it. I'm going to keep this one short and sweet. All right. Only five minutes or six. That's the second time you've made that voice. I do not sound like that at all. (laughs) (laughs) I'm loving you. The first shout out to Casey for uh, coming on and talking to us for two hours, mama. Uh, very knowledgeable dude, and like mentioned before, he's a politician. He's a politician, but he sat up here and talked to us for two hours about football and food. That's what we do. We talk about football and food. Everybody in the chat, second shout out. Amber, Victor, uh, Moms, Anthony, uh, Juanita, Whoever else I forgot, appreciate Wait, y'all. Don't, Even don't the people Skylar jumped on too. Big old Skylar. Hey, hey, yes. Welcome Skylar. back, Skylar. Uh, welcome back. I haven't seen Skylar in a minute. Welcome back. Yeah, Skylar. Uh, Skylar's cool. Vernon, when he Vernon wants to jump be. in at the last minute. Dark Spectre. Uh, KB, Dark Spectre, Dark Spectre. KB, Kasim Baker. We those are, early ones. We got some new people. Kasim Baker. I don't remember. No, he's not new. Kenyon, he's not new. It's the first time I've heard his name. Kenyon Perry? New. That one is new. That one is new. Welcome, Kenyon. Uh, yeah, so, so shout out to all of y'all that uh, participated in the chat. If you did not, <sighs> you are officially a lurker. Hell for love. We appreciate y'all anyway <laughs> because you took the time to engage in our foolishness. So, Thank you for that. 
Uh, I do want to shout out the sponsors as well, Hugh. In the zone, which we will be getting uh, shirts this weekend. This weekend or next week, we're getting we're getting shirts. If you all want those shirts, he's going to put a website up where you all can order them. Speaking of which, Anthony, I'm going to make sure that she puts that uh, website up for you. And give, I'm going to give you a code so you can get a discount on the hoodie. Anybody else that wants that, want to get a hoodie? Put that up. So uh, we 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 got to get this. We got to get the clothing in motion. It's going to get cold outside, so we got them hoodies, boy. We got them hoodies. But um, I want to shout out also my guys, man. This wouldn't be no show without my guys, Frank the Tank, Foul Mouth, JB, Easy. It w- it wouldn't be no show without y'all. Don't nobody want to hear me talk for no two hours. We well, always complain about you talking for 10 minutes on this finishing. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're still so, going, by the way. So appreciate y'all. Yeah, go go back to go back to playing your goddamn violin. I don't go. Uh, shout out to Lovey. I love how you just said I'm done. And then you just I didn't say I'm done. You just I said, said I'm done. You said no, I'm still going. I said I don't give a fuck. Close. <laughs> shout out to lovey man shout out to lovey for giving us something to talk about shout out to that bro and i hope he i hope he lands on his feet i hope he gets another job they did him dirty because they knew they didn't have no talent on that team so he was pretty much set up for failure yeah. in the first place mm-hmm. but they played it off real good and put it on twitter thank it you lovey hard. Get y'all motherfucking ass out of here, man. That 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 wasn't no heartfelt thank you. Shout that, out to they, your twin, they, huh? knew, they knew what was going on. Pretty man. sure the Bears fans gave him a bigger thank you than the Texans fans. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the sure. big high one to McNair and his group. Oh, hell yeah. Huh? I said the big high one to McNair, Casario, oh, oh, yeah. and their group. Yeah, yeah, because they've done this plenty of times. Yeah, they fucked plenty them. of times. This ain't nothing new. So, yeah, man, fuck them. And I think, oh, I do want to shout out Sherry. I made a bet with her. Uh oh. Uh, I think like before the season even started, and we said, okay, if the Bears have a better record, oh, and Sherry damn. has to wear. Lions jersey. If the Lions had a better record, and I have to wear a Lions jersey, uh, you might be. We're not doing that shit no more. We're not doing that. But this is what I had to say to her. I told you I'll pay your monkey ass when I feel like it. Better suck my. D- <laughs> well, it didn't go. I told you I'll pay your monkey ass. It didn't go exactly like that, but y'all get the gist of it. It was similar. similar. I wear that shit when I feel like I I ain't wearing it when. I mean, this is the time to do it, though, right? After they beat Green Bay. I feel like if there's ever a time. It would be a good time to do it. I I lost a bet with a Green Bay Packer fan, and I had to wear a Green Bay Packers jersey. Is that that fan you always keep bringing in here? No. No. I I'll never. never do that shit again. I'll never wear anybody else's jersey ever again. Fuck that. At least NFL jersey. Uh, that being said, man, I am done with my shout outs. Yeah, it only took I'll, about seven minutes. We'll go right ahead. Anyway, goddamn it. So what? We got any uh closing remarks anybody want to say? Yeah, bear down, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, there's your twin. <laughs> Who made that? That's so good. Take that shit out, Frank. Frank, this is what I got on the clock. Frank, this what I gotta say to you. You disloyal fool ass bitch made punk. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and then my response? You be gay, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my response to that. And then this is this is what we're going to leave with today. Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. 
What? <laughs> <laughs> and with that being said, man. This has been a Chicago Clubhouse Network production. <laughs> we out. I like that, like that glow ass that. mic, easy. Oh, thank you. It's uh. You're still here. It's over. Go home. Shout out to the Bulls, baby. You know it. Hey, they're going to give us hope right now because they're Didn't playing. Didn't um, DeMar get hurt yesterday? He did. Yeah. I still they're think they should just have a fire sale, but. What, 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 what was the injury? Oh, uh, angry. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>